نبتدي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, and I would like to uh, welcome uh, all people, all attendees where I would like to welcome by the, uh, the board of the Egyptian Pelvic and Hip Society and all the uh, speakers who are joining with us for this first webinar on fracture neck of femur. Uh, there are going to be two webinars, one today about the what we call the elderly, I was starting Hatta from the age of 50. The theme of this webinar is the fracture neck of femur in what we call the enigmatic age or the puzzling age, the confusing age starting from the age of 50. Second will be run, inshallah, on young active adults. Uh, throughout this uh, next couple of hours, we have uh, three lectures and three case presentations. Uh, I will start by presenting a lecture on the different type of patients and different options, followed by Dr. Ayman Ibed, who will talk about different options for arthroplasty. Dr. Ah uh, Sharif Khalid will talk uh, on uh, a debate between in fixation versus arthroplasty. And then three cases will be presented, one by Dr. Ahmed Abdel Al, one by Dr. Uh, Tariq Al Khadrawi, and finally by Dr. Ahmed Hazim. Uh, every session will be around maybe 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes with questions. We can finish roughly around in two hours' time. Inshallah, it will be something useful for everybody and not too long and too boring. Uh, I will start with the first lecture, so I will try to share my screen. Uh, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. So I will start my talk <coughs> on the fracture neck of femur in different patients and different options. When any orthopedic surgeon faces a fracture neck of femur, our reactions can be quite different. And in fact, the our reactions to this particular the challenging fracture is always linked with the possible complications with vascular necrosis, with uh, non-union and so on. And we tend to ignore the demanding issue of this fracture about our technique. And it's not only about AVN and non-union that we can end up with results that are far from being satisfactory like this case. So the mainly intended learning outcome from this talk is not just to talk a lot about the different patterns of fractures and what type of fractures we face and the vascular necrosis and so on. But I think if there is one main learning outcome is that we have to remember that our choice of treatments and the timing of implementation of that choice of treatment may play the main role about the outcome. And we have to remember that the same type of fracture occurring in different categories of patients can have different results. And the same type of patient can behave differently depending on the different type of fracture. We were brought up as surgeons to believe that there are two main categories of patients. The young with the high energy trauma, the better bone quality, where fixation is usually the main issue and the main type of treatment. Conversely, there is the old patients with osteoporosis, with a low energy trauma, where arthroplasty is the main choice. And in fact, this dichotomy of, of classification is the one for which we made two webinars, one for the old and one for the young. But I tend to believe, and many of the surgeons know, that there is this entity of patients that I tend to call the older than the young. These are the ones which have some of the characteristics of the young active, they can still be exposed to a higher energy of trauma. The osteoporosis may not be that profound. And internal fixation is still a very useful and viable option with only the osteoplasty at the back of our mind. I do not underestimate the risks involved with avascular necrosis and non-union, but I stress on the fact that the implementation of the treatment and the technique, how much of that can influence the result. So to me, such a result is probably influenced more by the treatment than by the um, 
abysmal natural history of ephemeral neck fracture. What I also observed is that we do not have too many classifications for ephemeral neck fractures. And perhaps we should have had more. The main difference in most of the classification is that there are the undisplaced fractures and the displaced fractures. And when you look at the very popular garden classification, you'll find it a classification with not a very satisfactory intra-observer and inter-observer reliability. And in fact, the Powell classification uh, has merely the, the benefits of pointing our attention to the risk of secondary displacement with a vertical pattern of fracture. The rest of the classifications to me are too cumbersome for me to remember, and I don't think that they will give us a very significant insight into a choice of treatments. So how important is the femoral neck fracture? It is extremely important. I think that one in five of any orthopedic surgical intervention all over the world is probably related to some injury around the hip. And 50% of these are intracapsular, so it's a femoral neck fracture proper. And there is a very high lifetime risk for the females. I think, I think one in two females will probably have to face the risk of a femoral neck fracture, of which 80% or more are displaced. 15% are displaced. The classical patient is starting from the age of 65 and above or 70. And thank God we are bipedal patients, so the risk is only doubled hip to be fractured after the second. If we had more hips, we would have probably had more fractures. The other thing that we observe is that we as human beings, the sapiens people, could somebody stop the uh, one mic has to go down, please. Thank you. So basically, as as um, uh, organisms that tend to turn into jellyfish as we get older with loss of bone mass, the osteoporosis plays a very important risk for femoral neck fractures. Not only it increases the risk of femoral neck fractures, but also it tends to cause a very low energy trauma provoking a comminution, a displacement at sites more common than other sites, and a bone density that doesn't allow our fixation device to get a good purchase into this bone area. And it's true that some of our patients may have better cognitive functions and better musculoskeletal control, but most of our patients of that age group have a higher risk of falls. And in fact, one report from the NHS have stated that every 18 seconds, one elderly patient will be wheeled into the emergency room as a result of a fall of which a big proportion may suffer from a femoral neck fracture. The classic patient tends to fall on their side with a bit of an external rotation mechanism of injury that causes comminution of the posterior neck. And the main site of bone loss, which is the proximal part of the femur, is usually the commonest site of fracture in a body that has other systems that tend to fail, increasing the anesthetic risk for this patient for surgical intervention. So this is the classic patient with a good percentage with cognitive impairment, but that should not reduce their rights into having the best possible surgical treatment to help them through a very critical phase of their life. The literature have shown us without doubt that after 72 hours of delay from inter of intervention in a femoral neck fracture, the 30-day mortality increases significantly and a recent paper in 2020 have shown that that risk can increase starting after 24 hours of delay of surgical intervention. Nevertheless, the undisplaced femoral neck fracture have shown a propensity to have a good result with internal fixation. In fact, the instance of non-union and avascular necrosis is very low in undisplaced femoral neck fracture. And this has encouraged surgeon to choose internal fixation irrespective of the age of the patient. But with a displaced femoral neck fracture, osteoplasty is definitely the choice. We will have a very interesting lecture by my friend, Dr. Ayman Abed, about the choice of prosthesis and arthroplasty. Still, quickly, the hemiarthroplasty has been one particular choice for the femoral neck fracture, 
with an alleged advantage of less dislocation due to a large femoral head. But I think nowadays we will hear about the benefits of dual mobility that has superseded the hemiarthroplasty. Whether a unipolar hemiarthroplasty, which has a satisfactory result, or a bipolar hemiarthroplasty with a slightly better result, both of them tended to work historically fairly well. Obviously, there are indications for total hip arthroplasty. I would say the top of the list is an associated arthritic hip. A rheumatoid patient like this doc, who should have probably had a primary total hip replacement for a femoral neck fracture instead of needing to go into a much more major reconstructive procedure due to failure of a unipolar hemiarthroplasty. Again, the failure with the decrease in bone mass dictates the, the use of a total hip arthroplasty. But finally, we are particularly getting more and more interested in using total hips, which we will hear about with Dr. Ayman Abed, for the active patients, like this one in their mid-60s, and this one in his mid-70s. I would still go for a total replacement for somebody who practices sports, running and jogging every day. So why not reduction and fixation for this age group? We are particularly concerned about a much lower instance of union in the elderly patient with a higher instance of failure of fixation due to the reduction in the bone mass and the bone stock. We know that the reduction and in internal fixation for the elderly with displaced femoral neck fracture, a much higher instance of non-union, added to this the instance of avascular necrosis, this produces a much higher instance of revision surgery when we choose internal fixation for the elderly patients. By contrast, the lower incidence of revision surgery encourages surgeon to use an arthroplasty, especially a total hip arthroplasty. Surprisingly, there is no really difference between the different mortality rates. Whether you use an internal fixation, a hemi, or a total hip, surprisingly, the total hip replacement in randomized controlled trials have had a much better rate of turning mortality. This is probably a bias in sampling because we tend to use total hip for the younger, active, and healthier. So whether we use a hip internal fixation or a hip replacement, we know that the best functional result is obtained with a higher Harris hip score when we use a total hip replacement. But a successful internal fixation would probably supersede a hemiarthroplasty hip score. So what internal fixation in this particular group from 50 to 60 or 65? So this is a younger patient, and I'm just using this example to know what we should do with internal fixation. The teaching has shown us that the best way to deal with these fractures when they are displayed is to obtain, first of all, a closed anatomical reduction Fixation, the most common device is with three cannulated screws. They have to be put in a specific pattern, an inverted triangular pattern with stress on the most inferior screw and the most posterior screw to support the posterior cortex of the femoral neck. The screws have to go as far as very close to the joint to have to get a good purchase within the femoral head. With that, Slight collapse invariably tends to happen. So a little bit of pulling, which is a controlled pulling of the head of the screw, does not mean failure. In fact, it means that we are aiming for union. Most of the femoral fractures which tend to be fixed can show some element of pulling in the screws, which is a good sign denoting union. And with union, results are supposed to be satisfactory. The older active patients have to be given the same chances and the same technique as the younger active patients. They have a better bone quality. They still can have a share of vertical fractures and fixation is the primary choice. Arthroplasty should only be put at the back of our minds. So this is a 59 year old active uh, businessman and we had a talk and a discussion about internal fixation versus arthroplasty. We opted for internal fixation. The same procedure, we have to try as much as possible to get 
a perfectly anatomical reduction in both AP and lateral views. I stress the value of the posterior screw, which has to go supporting the posterior cortex to avoid secondary displacement, as well as the inferior screw in the pattern that we, we know. A little bit of pulling due to collapse at the femoral neck will show that the femoral neck is actually going into union. And with this normal natural history, we end up with a good satisfactory result of the patient. So remember, we have to follow the guidelines. Same types of implants, the same number of screws, same configuration and same positions as we did the young active patients. Rarely one uses four screws. We tend to use mostly three screws with special emphasis on the posterior screw and the inferior screw. These are the main supportive screws to avoid failure as a result of a posterior and posterior inferior comminution that tends to happen with most of these fractures. This is a patient in, um, in his 65 years of age. He's again another active patient. And following this discussion about the options of arthroplasty versus internal fixation, we opted for internal fixation. So a closed anatomical reduction is chosen. The screws are put in their strategic positions. I always tend to strive on ob obtaining this posterior screw really abutting on the posterior cortex to support it and prevent secondary displacement. Very slight pulling out of the screws, slight collapse in the, in the neck, in the fracture plane, which ends up with union of the fracture. This is an orthopedic surgeon, my colleagues, and in his early 50s, he suffered from this injury. It's a garden foot fracture. And again, we opted for internal fixation. The same technique, a close reduction, anatomical reduction is of paramount importance. You can observe the comminution on the xeroscopy viewing. The screws are put strategically. The posterior screw is very important to support the posterior cortex. And the result goes on to be satisfactory. There is an element of collapse, but still the fracture heals and he's been fully weight bearing back to his normal activity for the past four years. This lady in her late 40s, I'm bringing her for a specific thing, this significantly displaced garden four fracture. Again, we go for the internal fixation, always trying to strive to obtain an anatomical reduction as much as possible. If we end up with a slight valgus, this is better accepted than a varus, but obviously the anatomical reduction is the first choice. Then we end up with union. What is interesting about her is that she goes on as we mostly expect or let's we mostly fear to go with avascular necrosis. She has a sector of avascular necrosis, which is superlateral, surprisingly, but then this is something that we've seen in many of my patients, avascular necrosis is much more tolerated for a femoral neck fracture than avascular necrosis due to an idiopathic or steroid induced. So even with avascular necrosis, she went on for several years with a good functioning that she can, without needing to change that into arthroplasty. So if you look at any classic recent textbook, they will tell you that an undisplaced fracture is preferably done with fixation. Once you go into this place, it depends on the age group. A cutoff number of 60 is chosen, whereby above the 60, they will tell you arthroplasty is the choice. We will hear that from Dr. Ayman Abed. But below the age of 60, in the absence of any significant osteoporosis and poor quality, you will choose reduction and fixation above that age. Then you can start to tip the balance towards arthroplasty. My observation to this is that nowadays, we should revise this cutoff number. I think perhaps we should raise it. Is it 65? Is it less than 65, more than 65? I don't think the number really counts. The issue is the activity of the patient and the bone quality. A good bone quality with an active patient can ask for an internal fixation with the possibility of a good functioning result. So I end up with reminding you that although a vascular necrosis and non-union 
are two particularly pointed at alibis for having bad results. The logical technique is the one that can influence your results much more than this alleged natural history of femoral neck fracture. And if you follow the technique well, you're bound to end with a much better result. Now, this is a fracture that demands very careful study. There are different types of fractures and different types of patients. And it is true that most of us as surgeons, we study our fractures carefully to assess the placement, the classification type, the best way of fixation. But I think we should add something else. Besides studying our fractures, we also need to study our patients. Thank you very much. I think this, um, this is the end of my, my talk. So I will uh, stop sharing the screen. So are we back? Dr. Ayman? Dr. Man Abid? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, I think now is, uh, is the time for your talk. Yeah. In, in it. So while Dr. Ayman is getting ready, can uh, does anyone want to, to ask any question? Yeah, okay. oh, no, no, no. What? Uh, let me ask you a couple of questions and Tillman is ready. Please. Can you hear me, Fad? Uh, okay. so I hear you very what's, well. What's your, what's, what's your preference in the arthroplasty, or uh, can we leave that for uh, Dr. Ayman's talk? I think we can wait for Ayman. Because he's going to talk in details okay, about the me, choice of us plus and then we can. What's your preference between one of two choices, the annulated screws or a HS? Or you don't have a certain preferences and why? Well, I, I think we would choose a, a DHS mostly if the fracture is more distal. A fracture which is somewhere between the classic transfer vicle and basotrochanteric in a young age, I will, I will go is for the DHS. The so, but for any patient, there's a lot of distortion. Classic, there is a distortion. Well, a there's a, uh, okay. So my because my now, usual nowadays choice. There's a trend. There's a nowadays there's a, a very strong trend uh, toward the fixed angle devices uh, like the DHS for better stability or the newer, not newer, uh, different uh, uh, types of uh, similar uh, fixed angle devices uh, for better uh, fixation and better um, maintenance of the angle of the, uh, to avoid the virus and posterior displacement of that, as you were saying. So uh, uh, do, you have good do you have good experience with the DHS or, or not really? Yes, well, well, my experience with femoral neck fracture with DHS is quite limited. My choice with the fixed angle devices is not mostly for femoral neck fracture. I don't use fixed angle devices. The fixed angle devices are different from DHS, as you know. The only time when I mm. use um, other types of devices is I can use a direct fixation with a small plate for open reduction, but that's beyond the scope of this. We, you mean when I have a younger patient with high comminution, I can sometimes use a fixed angle device. Uh, some of these cases we can show in the next webinar for the young active patients. But um, in this age group, starting from the age of 50 and above, I have never used an open reduction. I never used, needed to do that. I've always got them with, with, mm -hmm. with closed reduction and, and multiple cannulated screws. But for the younger age groups with a much higher energy of trauma, I've needed the few times to open the fracture, reduce it. And sometimes I apply a plate on the neck and sometimes I simply apply a fixed angle plate, as you mentioned. I will, I will, I think I will answer this question in my lecture as well, Dr. Fouad Excellent. and Dr. Ibrahim. Ah, uh, sorry, Steve. Fouad. Bark a little bit. So just Dr. Ayman is Dr. ready, Ayman. I think. Uh, Fouad, you have two questions uh, in the question and, and chat room. Okay. In the chat, uh, there is a question from Matwali Sayyid Ahmed. How is the post operative protocol after fixation, non-load bearing or partial load bearing? That's one question. 
Okay. And the other question from unknown one. Uh, asking about why there is option for bipolar and you know, unipolar, is there is evidence of superiority of one over the other? Okay. Um, for the first question... Yes, perhaps uh, perhaps the, um, uh, the lecture uh, uh, on, yes. uh, on arthroplasty is I going think... to, uh, to answer okay. this. Yes, yes. I, th I think that this is for the second question. For the first question, the, the post-operative protocol, I tend to allow them to go touch weight bearing with crutches, and I mean by touch with bearing, not that they let the, they go on the tiptoes. Touch with bearing to me is that they put all their foot on the ground and they slide the foot on the ground <clears> and with, with the, either a Zimmer frame or two crutches, if they can do that. But if, the, if I've chosen for them internal fixation, they probably, they have enough good musculoskeletal control to go through this uh, post-operative protocol. That's what I do. So I think now is the time for Dr. Ayman. Can you start uh, sharing yes, your screen, Ayman? I'm um, um, sharing my screen now. I, I did. Um, I am, I'm not sure if you have seen it already or not. Yes, now. Okay. You can see that now. Yeah, I think there's a problem with the voice, but the, 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 the screen, we can see it very well. Can you see my screen now? Yes, your screen is, is obvious. We can see it now. Can you see this? Yes. Ayman, can you hear me? Um, can you hear me now? Yes, we hear you and, and we you can, can see hear the me? screen. Okay. Um, um, uh, at the beginning, I... Uh, yes, I do. I do. I hear you very well. Okay, proceed, please, Ayman. At the beginning, obviously, I, I would like to thank um, um, uh, Professor Zamil for, um, for organizing this webinar. And um, it is a real pleasure uh, to, uh, to, uh, to present this talk. I'm glad that you ended your presentation by stressing two points, two important points as I can see them. One, it is not a matter of age. And the second is that uh, you went through uh, thorough discussion of fixation, uh, because I think, as been said, oh, we lost Dr. Ayman. Dr. Ayman, I think we've lost you. Oh, we lost him. Wait. Ayman, can you hear us? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here now again. If you can okay. hear me. Get in contact with him. Yes. How's that like? That, that okay now? Yes, please. I was, uh, can, can we ask the panel and everybody to mute your, your microphone okay. so that we, this doesn't do any, any intervention in the interference, please? Go ahead, Dr. Ayman. Thank you very much. Dr. Fayda, I think there is a connection problem, uh, Dr. Ayman. Ayman, can you hear us? I was saying that uh, uh, I'm glad. Uh, can you hear me? N we hear you now. Yes, we didn't I hear can the first. Hear you. Yes, Ayman, we're waiting for you. Okay. Um, if you can hear me, uh, what I wanted to say is I'm glad that you mentioned. Okay. Um, I'm glad that you mentioned two important points. The um, the first was that you went through a thorough discussion with your um, with your patients before performing a internal fixation, um, and the second was it is not an age limit. It is not only the age that will control your decision. Um, at the end, and I'm quoting one of the authors, um, uh, the best place for a viable, and we didn't wish for internal fixation to be the first stage in a two-stage arthroplasty. Now, the agenda in this talk is going to cover 
the choices between hemi versus total hip arthroplasty. I'm going to cover whether we Amen, I think we've lost you. Dr. Ayman, I think we... we, um, we what do you think? If, uh, yeah, 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 I can hear you. Okay, the screen doesn't show. Go ahead. Go ahead. It seems, yes. it seems that I have an unstable connection with the internet at the moment. Do you think Sharif can start yes. until I sort out with my internet connection? I'm okay. ready if you want. Okay. Yes, please, Sharif. Why don't you start now? Uh, okay, hello everyone. Uh, actually, my talk, uh, part of it was going to be covered by Dr. Ayman Abid. Already Dr. Fouad covered the part. I was supposed to summarize both uh, in a way or build on both lectures in a way. Uh, but for the time being, I will start with my lecture. Uh, let's go and tell me... What would you do for this fracture? An 85 years old with comorbidities. She has a left-sided femoral neck fracture in place. So regarding 85 years, people may think, let's go for arthroplasty. What would you do, Dr. Fouad, for a case like this? Well, 85 year old uh, in place, I would probably go for internal fixation. Obviously, okay. it depends on what you mean by, by comorbidities. Yeah. Uh, then we have another case, for example, a 60 years old active patient with a displaced femoral neck fracture. So let's see what we will do for these cases. My learning outcomes today are options of treatment about 50. You all know them. Fixation with the, whether screws or sliding hip screw or a fixed angle device, orthoplasty, whether hemi, Total and total, we mean total or dual mobility. I uh, will consider them as one group until Dr. Ayman would uh, go into further details. I will present some cases about 50 years of age, and I will present the evidence from the literature for undisplaced, for the choice of fixation device, and for displaced fractures. So let's start with the first case, 77 years old. Uh, as you can see, she has a right-sided vulgus impacted femoral neck fracture. So this is a basic simple case. We just go for fixation. And as Dr. Fouad said, uh, the lower and posterior screws are the most important. So for vulgus impacted, the choice is always fixation in situ. And we have no debate about this. 85 years old, the one I showed you in the beginning with comorbidities, she had everything almost, and the anesthesia said she cannot be anesthetized. So we went for uh, something a bit odd. I went for a local anesthesia. Uh, I do inject first the skin, and then I inject the periosteum at the site of the guide wires, and then I insert my guide wires and I use uh, self-tapping, self-draining screws in this case, she had uh, uh, a little bit of a vertical fracture, so I added a power screw at, uh, at 90 degrees to increase the stability. So this was my choice for this case. And regarding the literature, the literature said this is one of the uh, oldest and uh, biggest series from the Norwegian Hip Fracture Registry, 4,468 undisplaced fractures at one year. The implant survival was 89%, which is very good. But let's go into further details. The average age of the patient was 60 years of age. So beware of this um, information. So I looked in the literature and I found uh, a more recent review in 2020. And this review showed that 130 Gordon 1 and 2 fractures treated with percutaneous pinning 42% of them were Gordon type 1 and 63% of them were Gordon type 2 collapsed more than 10 millimeters as Dr. Fouad showed in his lecture that they collapsed to, uh, to heal. 
a 12 months follow-up, and the average age of the patients here was 72 years of age. And this was published in 2019 in the Journal of Orthopedic Trauma. So as you can see, regarding 60 years of age, 89% were successful, 72 years of age, we started to have some problems, and many of these patients ended up with orthoplasty. Then I would go into older age, more than 75, in a retrospective study of 130 undisplaced. This paper looked at 89 cases with bipolar hemiarthroplasty and 41 with internal fixation and found that the hemiarthroplasty had less surgical complications and less the operations. However, the internal fixation was a shorter surgical procedure and with less intraoperative blood loss. And the conclusion was that there was no statistical significant difference in hip joint function, had a SIP score and mortality rate in the midterm follow-up. So they said that both are accepted in uh, the age over 75. So as Dr. Fouad said, it's not a matter of age, it's a matter of activity, of bone quality, of patient satisfaction, of patient needs and uh, demands. Uh, another case, this was my exporter, 80 years of age. Uh, he fell at home and sustained the basal uh, femoral neck fracture. Uh, he is very slim, he is very active. So I decided to go for internal fixation with a DHS or a fixed angle device. Um, this probably was the question of uh, Dr. Ganzuri. Uh, when would you choose a fixed angle device? Um, most of the literature uh, didn't find any difference except uh, for cases of basal neck fractures or Powell's type three, where you need more stability because they found that fixed angle devices are better than uh, three or four screws. So regarding the internal fixation device, this is one also of the, of the biggest series that from the Cochrane Library uh, by Parker and Stockton. This included more than five trials comparing different implants. And the conclusion was that there was no clear evidence of superiority of any of the implants. So basically choose cannulated screws or DHS, whatever you want. Another um, a very important trial, the FAITH trial, which is the fixation using alternative implants for treatment of hip fractures, which was published in Lancet in 2017. And this was a big trial and their uh, interpretation was that the sliding hip screw showed no advantage in terms of reoperation rate. But however, a small group of patients, including smokers and those with displaced or base of neck fractures might do better with a sliding hip screw than cancellous screws. Otherwise, you can use cancellous screws for everyone. Then we come to the more difficult group, which is the displaced fractures between 50 and 60 years of age. And this is the main concern of this meeting. The options of treatment that were discussed in this paper published in, in the Journal of Trauma in 2010 the main option they, they chose was fixation for all the cases. Uh, the debate was about whether to do the reduction closed or open. And for cases that sustained non-union, they went for subprochanteric valgus osteotomy. For cases that sustained AVN, they went for core decompression. Uh, they compared also the results of drafting and vascularized fibular grafts. And they had many conclusions. One of them was that femoral neck fractures under the age of 50 present a perplexing problem. And I think we all face this problem. They found that timing of the surgery, capsular decompression and open versus closed are the most relevant variables influencing outcome. And they said that there was no consensus that exists and no accepted algorithm that has been formulated to their date to 2010 because the problem was that most of the literature comprised small case series and retrospective reviews. They found that the most significant sequelae for these patients were AVN and non-union. And however, they found that non-unions were often successfully treated, whereas uh, AVN treatment options were not as reliable. So they still recommended fixation for patients less than 60 years of age. However, put in mind, also what Dr. Fouad said that it does not rely on age because you might have a patient who is 56 years old and who has renal failure, who has associated arthritis, who has a very uh, low activity and who is in this case treated as if he's a patient of 70 years old. So it's not a matter of age, it's a matter of all other 
uh, factors. Another example, this is a 75 years old female with a liver cell failure. So what would you do for this case? I think we all agree about this case. And Dr. Ayman is going to cover this in his lecture more and more. So I think everybody would go for a bipolar prosthesis. And let's go to the literature and see what it said for displaced fractures in the elderly. Many, many, many uh, publications in the literature. I, I had only few. They showed that there is a higher reoperation rate, about 55% with internal fixation versus 11% for arthroplasty. Another uh, meta-analysis of 14 randomized control trial, including about 2,300 patients. They found that the failure rate of internal fixation reached up to 57% and the reoperation reached up to 53%. In contrast, the reoperation after arthroplasty was about 7%. So they said that displaced fractures in the elderly, we would go for arthroplasty. Uh, Another very important series from the Norwegian hip registry, again, including 4,335 4, patients. They are all over 70 years of age. Internal fixation was done in 1,800, hemiarthroplasty in 2,500. Results at one year, there was a statistically significant difference regarding reoperation rate, about 22.6% in internal fixation versus 2.9% in hemiarthroplasty. Uh, and the internal fixation patients had more pain, more dissatisfaction, and lower quality of life at one year. And their conclusion was that displaced femoral neck fractures in the elderly should be treated with hemiarthroplasty. Uh, what about a displaced fracture between 60 and 70 years of age? And this is, again, another debatable uh, age, and Dr. Ayman is going to cover this. This is a 66 years old actus patient like Dr. Fouad mentioned in his literature, the most important thing to my mind is not the age, it's the activity level. And it's also talking to the patient. I mean, you have to give the patient the options and discuss with the patient uh, the pros and cons of each option and give him some choice between maybe hemi and total. And this lady chose a total uh, hip replacement. Uh, so that's why we gave her a total hip replacement. Another example of a 60 years old, the patient is much younger. However, he, is, he has very, very low activity. He moves only from bed to the bathroom and he's been uh, a very, very slow walker for his last few years. And uh, this was a low energy trauma. Uh, he fell from the bed and that's why we gave him a cemented bipolar prosthesis. So for inactive osteoporotic, he had a door type C, so I chose a cemented prosthesis. The other example I showed you in the first slide, which is a 60 years old active. Again, I went for total hip, and I will leave the, 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 the entity of doing a total hip versus a dual mobility uh, for the lecture of Dr. Ayman, because I know this is another debate. Uh, I had patients with dual mobility, but they are all like 85 years of age. And I thought Dr. Ayman would cover this, uh, the choice of what type of arthroplasty for, the, for this age in his lecture. Um, then again, we go to the literature to compare arthroplasty clinical outcomes. And as you can see, this is similar to the results Dr. Fouad showed. You, you can see that at two years of age down there, the total hip has the best score for the pain, has the best score for the function, and has the best survivorship. So at two years of age, the function, the pain, survivorship were best for total hip in comparison to internal fixation, unipolar, and bipolar. Uh, again, paper comparing total hip versus hemiarthroplasty versus internal fixation, published in the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery uh, in 2006. It included only 298 patients aged 60 and over and healthy. And they found that open reduction in internal fixations were, were, had eight times more likely to need revision. And the cost of open reduction in internal fixation was more expensive because they considered the cost of the, the initial procedure plus the revision procedure. So that's why the, the, the cost became more expensive. And they found that functional results were best for total hip arthroplasty. Again, whether to do hemi or total hip, 
This is a paper published in 2008 in, in the Journal of Arthroplasty. It's a prospective multi-center randomized control trial. The mean age of cases with total hip was 82 years of age, and the mean age for the hemiarthroplasty was 77 years of age. At two years, uh, the, 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 the short forms 36 score, the total hip arthroplasty significantly did better. And, and uh, in the WOMAX score, the, in the WOMAX score as well, the total hip significantly did better. So as you can see, functionally, the total hip, they do better. Pain, total hip did better. Complications, there was no statistically significant difference between the total hip and the hemiarthroplasty. So you can say that total hip mainly would give you the advantage of a better functional scores, uh, whether Harris hip score, WOMAC, or SF36 in comparison to hemiarthroplasty for active patients. Again, another uh, uh, comparison between hemi and total, this was from the orthopedic trauma uh, directions uh, published uh, in March, 2011. And this was evidence from five randomized control trials. They found that the dislocation rate in hemiarthroplasty was much less than total hip, and this was a plus for a hemi. Revision was more for a hemi uh, more than a total. And of course, this is, I think, logic for all of us. Mobility definitely was better for a total hip arthroplasty than hemiarthroplasty, especially after increased time. So if you compare the patients at one year of age, probably you will find no difference. But looking at these same patients at two years, they found that total hip arthroplasty patients had a better mobility. Mortality, there was no difference between both and pain was inconclusive. So to summarize, this is the same algorithm that Dr. Fouad showed, but I, you will see I changed a few things about it. When you have a femoral neck fracture and it is non-displaced or impacted, then your choice will be always fixation inside you, regardless of the age. Is this true? As you, as you have seen from the literature, not very true because if it's non-displaced and the patient is very old, is more than 75 years of age, then you would probably go for an orthoplasty because it will give you a better, um, a better operation with no risk of re-operations later on because of the extreme collapse that happens. If the fracture is displaced, then most of the literature divided the patients into less than 70 and more than 70. But for the sake of the Egyptian population, I changed this to into less than 60 and more than 60. And fortunately enough, this coincided with the algorithm Dr. Fouad showed. So for a displaced, more than 60 years of age, then we would go for a prosthesis. Which one? This will, will again go to Dr. Ayman Abid. Over 75 years of age, definitely go for a hemiarthroplasty. Uh, between 60 and 75, then this is a debatable age where you can go for, for total hip or hemi depending on the activity and the patient demands. If it's displaced and the patient is less than 60, then you probably would go for closed reduction, as Dr. Fouad said, and internal fixation, whether with cannulated or, or DHS. Cannulated in most of the cases, DHS only in Powell's type 3, maybe, and basal neck. And if you are able to reduce, then you probably go for an open reduction in internal fixation. And my take home messages are that bulgus impacted, then you would go for fixation at any age. If it's undisplaced between 50 and 70, probably fixation is your option more than 70, then both are accepted, but have a little bit preference towards the arthroplasty or displaced fractures, 50, 60 years of age, then internal fixation is your choice after talking to the patient and giving him all the options and explaining to him that this might end up with AVN or non-union and might require another procedure. Between 60 to 70, this is a debate uh, between total hip and hemiarthroplasty. However, the trend nowadays is going towards a total hip more than a hemi and above 70, then a hemiarthroplasty I think would win. For the fixation device, you can use cannulated, and this is the most commonly used worldwide versus a DHS. And as we said, the DHS is just for vertical fractures or basal neck fractures, and the reduction can be closed or open. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Fouad, for inviting me today. Thank you, Sharif, for the very um, 
interesting and exciting lecture. I think you summarized it all in a very nice, seamless way. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I've, I think, Dr. Akram, do we have any questions while Dr. Ayman gets ready? We have three questions, One, uh, okay. two for you. Uh, okay. There is a question from Ahmed Gouda. Do you prefer okay. DHS in bowel type three fracture? Bowel type three, do you prefer yes. DHS? Bowel, bowel type three fracture, yes, with a vertical fracture. My main interest is putting a bowel screw with the DHS or without the DHS, okay? Um, um, I, I fixed bowel fractures with a, with a bowel screw and two cannulated screws and it worked well. Um, and, and, it, and a DHS can be used. But my special preference has always been with cannulated screws and a Powell screw, which is a fully threaded screw that goes across or at right angle to the fracture plane. This is my choice. Uh, the other question to Sharif. Uh, he's asking why in 60 years active patient, you did a total hip replacement and you didn't think about fixation. Uh, no, I thought about fixation, and I usually explain to the patient that the fixation will require probably a, a much displaced fracture like this will probably require an open reduction. And I explain to him that uh, it might heal or it might end up with a non-union or an AVN. And I give him both options, the arthroplasty and the fixation. And in, in this case, the patient chose uh, a total hip replacement because uh, I think that the patient uh, can have a say in, 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 uh, in this gray zone. So between 50 and 70, depending on the activity, on the needs, on what the, the patient wants, on the activity level pre fracture and on the uh, bone quality. And after talking to the patients, some patients would, would go for total hip in hope to avoid the operation pro uh, procedure. Uh. Another question to you, Sharif, because you mentioned the valgus impacted fracture in your algorithm in the back of your, at the end of your presentation. Do we ever have to reduce the valgus impacted fracture in No. Uh, yeah. Some papers, the valgus impaction may kink the posterior superior retinacular blood test. Um. Uh, from most of the of the courses I attended, from most of the literature I read, uh, vulgus impacted are preferably fixed in situ always, um, and don't have any experience of of trying to reduce them. So, if any of the panel would like to comment on this, if if any of the panel would try to reduce a vulgus impacted, uh, personally, I have never tried and just followed the literature doing it in situ. Okay. Okay. Uh, if, I think if we have, do you have, do you still have questions, Dr. Akram? We still have a question about, uh, uh, yeah, for uh, Amir Sheikh asking about the lose the age of 50. That's the next, you know, I think, yeah. Yeah. This, this is the coming you webinar. Know. Yeah, that's the next yes. webinar. <laughs> yeah. What okay. about if that's for you? That's for you, for. The last yes. one. Uh, what about using a polystyrene screw to prevent further or neck shortening after fixation? Yes, I sometimes do that when I have. Yes, I sometimes do that in some in some uh, fractures, especially if I have a, a comminution along the posterior and the cortex. In which case, I would probably put a cancerless, fully threaded screw to prevent further collapse of this fracture. Because if I just tighten um, especially the posterior and the inferior screw along high comminution or the higher level of comminution with the posterior column or the posterior cortex, there is a higher instance of collapse and, and secondary displacement. Remember that if you go into collapse with a comminuted inferior cortical uh, fracture, you can easily go into varus. And, and if you go into varus, you're bound to fail. So okay. I use that in some cases. Yes. Okay. Just the end of the question now. You can go. Okay, Dr. Ayman, uh, are we ready? Uh, yes, Excellent. I hope in the internet connection um, work is this time. Um, uh, I'm glad really that I've, uh, I've listened to, uh, to your presentation as well as uh, Sharif's presentation. And I'm taking um, uh, from the last words that you said as well as Sharif said. 
um, uh, you said that you discussed the decision with your patients, and uh, Sharif said, Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. And Sharif said uh, um, uh, it is not a matter of age. It is the uh, type of activity as well as the bone quality, the configuration of structure. So the other factors, rather than the uh, fact of the patient's chronologic age, would determine the uh, decision. So um, uh, taking it from there, I think the best place for the double head would be within acetabulum. And we wouldn't wish for interpretation of a femoral neck fracture to be the first stage stage doctor plastic. So we have to be careful about our decision making in these patients. Um, uh, therefore, the agenda is going to cover the arthroplasty options, hip or total hip. And I think the um, uh, uh, audience have heard some about this, commented and some um, uh, arthroplasty the options, and finally, we'll be talking about it, which articulation or bearing surfaces. Uh, what is the uh, uh, optimal arthroplasty option for fractured neck of femur? Well, I think what we are searching for, and the best or the optimum type of arthroplasty would give us the lowest rate of complication, highest functional outcome, long survival, and consistent outcome happen between different surgeons and different hospitals at different level, uh, levels of expertise. And hopefully, this is going to be the lowest economic uh, uh, burden to the patient and the health system as a whole. Taking this in consideration, I think there is still a big gap in the literature, and the gap is coming from multiple factors. Um, majority of the randomized trials and the prospective um, uh, uh, or the uh, retrospective studies that we read in the literature usually are um, uh, considering older version of implants that is being evaluated. For example, they're still considering, or not still, but some of the literature um, has employed uh, hemiarthroplasty, Thompson processes, and Ostomore processes. Obviously, these are out of uh, the market now. They are not being used anymore. Um, the second point is, age in itself is not enough to judge fitness or activity of the patient. And the majority of the randomized trials usually present short-term outcomes. Uh, the longest may be 10 years, but we see many studies that present two-year results, four-year results, and this is too short follow-up. To, um, uh, to tell us exactly what is the outcome in the longer term. The, third, the fourth point is that Kaplan-Meier survival curve doesn't consider patients who are deceased during the study period. They do not consider them as failures because they didn't fail, obviously, but they died. And we don't know if they were still available, uh, 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 how would their arthroplasty be functioning at this stage? And the survival in itself doesn't mean patient satisfaction. So it doesn't mean that the patient is still living with an arthroplasty or a hip prosthesis that was inserted. It means that this patient is satisfied and therefore patient reported outcomes are very important to look at when you read the literature. And there is a clear difference in the practice between the North American and the European surgeon in terms of consideration of the type of arthroplasty that is being um, uh, used. Despite what we can see in, from the gap that we see in the literature, we will try to summarize some of the evidence that is available and that can help us in finding out what is the best option in the decision for our patients. And I'm starting with this study that compared patients who received the total hip arthroplasty for trauma versus a matched cohort of elective cases. Average age of the group was 70 years, and the functional outcome um, uh, uh, for these patients were similar. It means that patients who received total hip arthroplasty for trauma enjoy the same level of functional activity as patients who receive it for osteoarthritis. 
The trauma group, however, had higher rates of complication and dislocation was one of the most important complications that were found. Um, uh, another factor that you can look at is the medical comorbidities or complication rate in the trauma patient, which was found to be much higher than patients going for elective surgery. Um, this is um, uh, another randomized trial that looked at HEMI versus total hip arthroplasty versus internal fixation. And they looked at 278 patients above the age of 65. Um, uh, as you see, cemented Thompson, cemented total hip or DHS. The revision rate in the first year for this group of internal fixation was 25%. The lowest dislocation was with the uh, Thompson, but the uh, cemented hip had a higher rate of instability in comparison to the hemiarthroplasty. And this is, again, a, a very important at 13 years. And you have to remember all these patients were above the age of 65. So above the age of 65, I think total hip arthroplasty is achieving the highest uh, or the best functional outcome and the least revision rate. However, in comparison to hemi arthroplasty, it has a higher rate of uh, uh, dislocation. Um, again, this is, I think, one of the cornerstones of the um, uh, uh, um, uh, trials that were performed to compare HEMI versus total HEMI. It's a Swedish study that was published in 2008 and looked at 120 patients with a mean age of 80, elderly, really old. All patients were healthy, walking independently, so they were active, and there were no major cognitive dysfunction. And the, the best thing in this is that um, the uh, stem that was used in this trial was the extra stem, and they used for both the bipolar and the total hip um, uh, anterolateral approach in all cases and its modern cementing technique. Total hip had longer operative time and a higher blood loss, which is not a surprise. But total hip patients had significantly better function than the bipolar. Surprisingly, in this study, there were no dislocation and similar rates of complication between hemi and total hip arthroplasty. When we look at the functional and health-related quality of life outcome, we found that both groups, the hemi and the total hip, were still living independently at 12 months. But the hip function was significantly better at four months and more so at 12 months of follow up. Okay, so it's very clear that hip arthroplasty has a better functional outcome when compared to hemi arthroplasty. What is the effect of mental function on the outcome? Well, this is a study again that clearly showed the effect of deterioration of the mental function on the overall functional outcome and rate of complication. It is over 100 patients, we're over 75 years. They compared osteosynthesis in re, uh, versus arthroplasty. And in this group, complication in the group of osteosynthesis was more than 54%, while dislocation with arthroplasty was over 22%. The Harris Hibbs score again was better for the patients who receive arthroplasty, and the mental function was proved to heavily affect the outcome of both groups because the dislocation was 63% in the mentally affected group um, uh, versus 12% in the mentally alert. And the complications for the uh, 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 fixation group again was lower when they were mentally alert in comparison to the lack of cognitive ability in these uh, group of patients. So it proves by no means that mental function is a very important factor to consider. Uh, uh, and um, uh, uh, obviously uh, the rate of complications would be far more higher, uh, whatever the option you do 
uh, osteosynthesis or um, uh, arthroplasty, standard arthroplasty, uh, if the patient has a lower cognitive ability. Um, again, this is, I think, a, a, a very recent article published last year, and it is a meta-analysis of 12 articles that met the criteria for inclusion in the study, and it is comparing hemi versus total hip arthroplasty. There was no difference in the rate of mortality at 30 years, one year, or four years follow-up. The highest hip score favors total hip over hemi. Significant difference. The quality of life, SF12 was um, uh, used in these studies, showed that total hip is far more better than the hemi. Again, a significant difference. The revision and reoperation at five years favor total hip arthroplasty, and the dislocation favors the hemi. So I think it is very clear from this study that um, it is a meta-analysis. One of the um, uh, uh, highest level of evidence that can be provided is a recent article, 19, um, uh, 2019, as I said, and um, it included 12 studies. And it's very clear that total hip is uh, uh, better than uh, hemarthroplasty in terms of the functional outcome, in terms of the uh, revision and reoperation rate. However, the problem is the uh, dislocation. And it shows a, a significant, a highly significant difference between hemi versus total hip arthroplasty in terms of the um, dislocation rate. So if dislocation of the, of, is a problem, would dual mobility be better um, uh, as an option of articulation for patients with fractured neck of the femur? Well, this is again comparing hemi arthroplasty uh, versus conventional fixed bearing, 28 millimeter head versus dual mobility total hip arthroplasty. And it shows very clearly that the rate of instability with dual mobility is far more or less than total hip arthroplasty and far more or less than hemi arthroplasty as well, um, uh, whether it is anterolateral or even with the posterior approach that is uh, known to have a higher incidence of instability in comparison to the uh, uh, anterolateral or the um, uh, anterior approach. Um, we have another um, uh, 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 thing to, uh, to, to say. Many of the patients with um, uh, fracture neck of the femur might have a high risk of dislocation anyway. They are morbidly obese, and, um, and in this case scenario, I think dual mobility would be the best option to perform. We have another category. Yeah, if you look at this lady who was um, uh, 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 slightly younger, she's only in her mid-50s or, um, uh, or so, and um, uh, has a comminuted fracture, neck of the femur. It is um, uh, 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 not a subcapital fracture, but displaced and collapsed. What we, um, uh, we see is a lower bone quality than would, uh, uh, what would be uh, seen in someone in his 50s. And the other risk factor is the presence of a spinal fusion, um, a morbidly obese person. And um, uh, so a combination of risk factors that would put this patient into high risk of failure, whether you perform internal fixation, uh, and definitely if you perform a hip arthroplasty, uh, you would need a prosthesis that would help to keep this hip uh, stable. And I think, again, dual mobility uh, should be considered in these patients with uh, high risk factors for instability. Um, how about the survival of total hip for trauma versus osteoarthritis? Well, this is a graph taken from the National uh, uh, Joint Registry of England and Wales. And um, uh, the trauma group were observed generally to be slightly older than patients who are receiving elective hip arthroplasty. There were higher percentage of cemented and hybrid fixation of implants, and we know very well that there is a trend in the UK of performing cemented arthroplasty, uh, particularly cemented uh, stems for the trauma patients. Uh, and um, it shows uh, that the rate of revision, when compared to patients with, with, um, uh, with osteoarthritis, was higher, regardless of the age as a, a stratification was performed to exclude the bias as a result of the age of this group. But again, it showed that trauma patients have a higher incidence of uh, revisions. Uh, and we can see at 14 years uh, in patients with osteoarthritis, the revision rate was around seven uh, to 8%. Uh, 
while with the, um, uh, with the trauma patients, the incidence of revision was higher than this. Uh, again, who is a suitable candidate for total hip arthroplasty? I think if you have a patient who's walking independently with outdoor activity and with good cognitive integrity, and this can be evaluated with um, uh, the mental score that you can see on the right hand side of the uh, screen. This is a short portable mental status questionnaire. You ask the patients what's the day, the month, and the year, what's the day of the week, uh, what is the name of the, uh, of the place, um, what's your phone number. Um, uh, this is obviously designed for the uh, United States of America, so they are mentioning the uh, current president of the uh, United States, but obviously we can do the same here in, uh, in Egypt. Out of these 10 questions, if the patient answers four or five uh, of these correctly, he would, uh, he would be considered with um, a, a, a good cognitive ability and, um, and could be uh, considered for total hip arthroplasty. Uh, he, assuming that he is healthy enough, walking independently and having outdoor activity. So hemarthroblasty, uh, who would be a candidate for hemarthroblasty then? Well, this is usually uh, reserved for the less healthy, inactive patients, um, uh, usually using assistance for walking, uh, Zimmer frame, for example, or uh, two crutches or being transferred to the uh, toilet. Um, uh, cognitive dysfunction is something to carefully look at um, uh, and the um, uh, short life expectancy uh, for the patient. Uh, why I'm putting a question mark around the cognitive dysfunction? Because sometimes in patients with cognitive dysfunction and uh, in patients with neuromuscular disorders, you may opt to choose dual mobility again in this group of patients to avoid the um, uh, uh, high rate of instability. They cannot follow your commands. They cannot follow your instructions. However, there are some unsol unsolved debates. Uh, cemented, cementless, which one to choose? Patients with neuromuscular disorders, as I said, and the uh, neglected fractures, because sometimes you see patients coming with neglected fracture. We still see them here in Egypt, and I don't, I don't think this is something that uh, normally or regularly being seen uh, in the Western countries. Uh, there isn't much in the literature written, and uh, perhaps this is uh, a point of debate between internal fixation and uh, arthroplasty uh, uh, according to the age of the patient. When you see someone with neglected fracture and non-union, hasn't had any previous attempt for fixation, what would you do for them? Um, this is um, uh, a study that looked at the effect of the hospital volume on the outcome of total hip arthroplasty. And um, this is, uh, again, um, uh, uh, based on, uh, on the state of New York. They looked at 90 days uh, dislocation rate, uh, which was found to be 1.05%. Um, uh, 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 One year major revision rate, 0.5%. One year mortality was around 15%. And the, um, uh, compared between the high volume hospitals who perform regular arthroplasty in their outcome in comparison to hospitals who perform a lower uh, number of cases or occasional arthroplasty, and they found out there is a major difference in the outcome, both in the short and long, longer term uh, when you compare the outcome from these two different types of hospitals. Uh, we said at the beginning that we wish to have a cost-effective procedure. Um, and this is a, a model, a paper, uh, and uh, looked at a model comparing internal fixation versus bipolar, unipolar, hybrid total hip, and cemented total hip arthroplasty. And they looked at the cost that be incurred um, uh, uh, if the um, uh, internal fixation had failed and the possible complications, how to treat them, the rate of instability following uh, standard hip arthroplasty, and they came out with the conclusion that um, cemented total hip would be the most cost-effective procedure um, uh, in treatment of, uh, of uh, uh, fracture neck of the femur. Um, uh, again, this is another study that looked at the cost-effectiveness uh, for dual mobility versus fixed bearing total hip arthroplasty. Uh, this paper didn't include patients with fracture neck of the femur only, but also included patients with dual mobility for other uh, uh, reasons. 
And they considered the relative risk of dislocation in due mobility articulation versus fixed bearing as 0.4%. Um, if you perform regular total hip arthroplasty, uh, I think dual mobility articulation would be more cost effective, particularly in this group of patients with fractured neck of the femur. How about cemented or cementless fixation? Well, we know that cementless total hip is known to have a higher incidence of periprosthetic fracture, both intraoperatively and postoperatively. And um, this is study looked at the various parameters that should be taken in consideration when you perform uh, 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 hip arthroplasty to choose between cemented or cementless. They found that patients with severe osteoporosis and um, uh, cortical bone ratio of more than 0.49% uh, have a higher incidence of um, uh, having a periprosthetic fracture that reaches to around 15% uh, uh, intra and postoperatively. And to uh, just to um, uh, remind my colleague that the cortical bone ratio is a measurement of the um, industrial uh, diameter uh, over the outer diameter at a distance of 10 centimeters distal to the uh, lesser tuberosity. So if someone has a higher uh, uh, ratio uh, of the cortical bone ratio, I'd say, uh, it means that he would be better considered for a cemented stem rather than uh, a cementless stem. How about the younger patients, less than 60? Well, I think uh, in the younger patient, we still have some indications to perform hip arthroplasty in patients younger than 60 years of age. Um, and we know that uh, double cemented and cementless implants are available. Obviously, because of the higher incidence of instability, large head diameter, 32 and 36, would be advisable than to use the standard 28 millimeter. And in this case scenario, if we are using a, a, a large head diameter, would better be mixed with a cementless cap and the cross-linked uh, 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 polyethylene liners, um, as we are using a cementless um, uh, cups. Uh, uh, whether to use ceramic on on, on top of cross-linked poly or uh, metal articulation. Again, this is a matter of debate, but we know that the literature uh, shows a, a lower rate of wear uh, of the cross-linked poly if a ceramic head is used. Um, again, as I said, the challenge may be the younger patient uh, who is less than 60 years old, but with an indication for total hip arthroplasty, like this lady um, uh, who was left with untreatment, um, uh, neglected fracture neck of the femur until she reaches to this stage uh, with a subcapital fracture resorption of the neck. And um, uh, in, in this case scenario, perhaps if we perform um, a hip arthroplasty, I've chosen for her to have a ceramic head on cross-linked poly and cementless cup and, uh, uh, and stem. To summarize what is available in the literature, total hip has better functional outcome than hemi in the active patient. Hemi is usually reserved to the elderly, less active, and mentally less competent. The cemental stems have high incidence of periprotic fracture in severely osteoporotic And dislocation with fixed bearing 28 millimeter diameter head is still a challenge. The hospital volume uh, 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 of arthroplasty influences the outcome for the um, uh, procedure performed. And, and like my, my colleagues did, I, uh, I tried to put a paradigm to look at the acute subcapital fracture neck of the femur garden three and four. If the patient is above the age of 60 years, if he is active, healthy, and mentally intact, I would consider dual mobility. If not, I would uh, consider a bipolar hemarthroplasty. Uh, if the patient is in the gray area between 55 and 60, uh, I would look at and is, and is indicated for hip arthroplasty. I would reevaluate the risk of instability post arthroplasty. If the patient's BMI is above 40 or there is a spinal fusion, I would again choose dual mobility articulation. But if not, I would choose cementless large head ceramic on cross linked uh, poly. Um, uh, again, selecting cemented or cementless 
will be based on both bone quality as well as the anesthetic risk, because sometimes you are just forced to perform a procedure within 20 minutes or so, and you don't need to, uh, to wait for the uh, bone team to, uh, to be cured. So um, I hope this would uh, summarize um, uh, my thoughts about uh, the hepatoplasty, what is the available evidence in the literature, and I would like at the end to thank you very much for your attention and for um, being patient with me when I had uh, no internet connection. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ayman. It's a very um, uh, inclusive presentation with, with really extensive review of the literature. <clears throat> it really puts all the points we discussed in perspective, and it clarifies the choices of arthroplasty for this uh, age group. I think we're running a little bit um, uh, late in time, so maybe if Dr. Ahmad Al-Al is, uh, is ready, <coughs> excuse me, um, maybe you can proceed with the case presentation of Dr. Ahmad Abdullah. Okay, I'm ready. Thank you. Salaam alaikum, Gamian. Masmo Soti? Yes, yes, we hear you very well. I will. كل سنة حضراتكم طيبين. Okay. Uh, we had three nice talks about refraction necrophema in this uh, age group. Uh, when you face a patient uh, from this group with refraction necrophema, I think you need to individualize the treatment according to the patient factors, uh, all of it. So if we have this patient, she is a female. Uh, 64 years old with rheumatoid arthritis, uh, being treated by RC3 and uh, mesotrexate. Uh, she's diabetic type 2 diabetes, ischemic heart disease, asthmatic with reduced, uh, reduced pulmonary function. Uh, this is the X-ray of the patient, and the fractured neck of the left femur has happened uh, three uh, days ago. So if you look at the age, she is uh, 64. She is rheumatoid, uh, diabetic, ischemic heart, and uh, reduced pulmonary function due to asthma. So decision for treatment was a replacement, as uh, fixation will lead probably to failure. Uh, decided to, uh, she's my patient from A to Z, so all the complications happened with me. Uh, decided to give her a hip replacement rather than a hemi because she's rheumatoid with soft acetabulum. Uh, decided that the hip replacement should be cementless because she's asthmatic and has reduced pulmonary function. And uh, it's better to avoid the cement in these patients. And the bearing surface is a metal head on highly cross-linked polyethylene. Execution, the operation was done uh, straightforward, the total hip replacement, uh, no problems during the operation. A stablum was reamed to 48 millimeter. Uh, 50 millimeter cup press fit was used with no screws. Uh, HA coated stem was inserted and a 32 millimeter head uh, cobalt to chrome was used. I went home and they sent me this X-ray after the operation. Uh, as you see, the cup is about 75 or 80 degrees vertical. Uh, I am sure it was not like this in operation because uh, during the operation, the edge of the cup was in, uh, on the edge of the stabula. And uh, I am sure it was 45 degrees uh, to the horizontal. So I think the cup has moved during reduction or manipulation during movement on transferring the patient because the soft bone of the acetabulum did not support the cup. So the plan was to wait for two weeks and then until the wound heals and then revise the cup and uh, use screws to hold them. 
she's from the new valley من الوادي الجديد and this is the real trouble to come she didn't come after two weeks but she came after three weeks with this picture so the wound as you see and the hip is infected plus that we need to revise the cup so I did aggressive debridement and excision of the wound edge. The cup was removed, reamed to 50 millimeters, that's two millimeters than first time. And a 54 millimeter cup was inserted. So the cup is four millimeters larger than the last reamer. And three screws were used to fix the cup into the stabulum. The stem was retained. The head was changed to a 36 millimeter head. Three grams of vancomycin powder was put in the wound. And this was the picture of the cup, the new cup in the hip. X-ray postoperative. The new cup is an ideal position, the three screws fixing the cup into the stabulum. And the postoperative regime was cultural sensitivity done during operation didn't show any growth. Uh, I give her fourth generation kephalosporin intravenous every 12 hours. Partial weight bearing with a frame, just touch down weight bearing uh, to protect the cup until it heals. After two weeks, they sent me the picture of the wound and we see it has healed nicely. And I was very happy that we have got rid of infection and uh, she should be okay by this. Five weeks, which is two days ago, so five weeks on Wednesday, they sent me this picture, the hip is dislocated. So I'm still thinking I have to do this operation next week. Should I do closed reduction? Should I do open reduction? And what if the cup is loose? Should it be revised again? Because if we look at this X-ray here, I think there is a little gap between the cup and the stabulum. Possibly due to the view of the X-ray, but if it's, this is true, this will be a problem. So I appreciate your answers, please. Thank you. Uh, can I uh, comment on, the, on, on this, Ahmed? Father, please. يعني طبعا كل اللي حضرتك عملته is quite uh, good, especially the dire procedure uh, you did uh, after three weeks when you discovered that the hip is infected. But uh, 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 my question for you: Why didn't you choose uh, you change the cup? with a cemented one. Yani li inta choose to put a cementless one while the first one failed immediately post-operative and you know that the bone is uh, soft. Yani atakit cemented uh, would be an option at that time. She is asthmatic with uh, pulmonary fibrosis and reduced pulmonary function. Uh, my experience with them is very bad. They usually die on table while pressurizing the cement. That's why I am avoided using cement from the start. But uh, if she is not asthmatic, if the pulmonary function is okay, I would use a totally cemented hip for such a patient. لا انا فيرذر كومنت يمكن طبعا المشكله بتاعت السمنت ديزيز وال والبلمونري امبلايزيشن اوف ذا سمنت يمكن مع الستم اكتر مع الكب ف يعني اي اي وود راذر ابوت ا سمنتد كب فور هير يعني وكنت يمكن هبقى مور كومفورتبل ان ما يحصلش بروبلم وذ ذا سمنت لكن طبعا الستم بتبقى اتس ا ديفرنت ايشو وين يو جو فور بريشرايزيشن اوف ذا سمنت انسايد ذا فيمر ديفينتلي ذير از ا ريسك Uh, on the patient with, with the reduced pulmonary uh, function, yeah. 
So, uh, some authors consider the lung fibrosis is a contraindication for cementing either stapulum or uh, stem. Maybe, yeah. ممكن اسال سؤال يا دكتور احمد؟ اتفضل يا دكتور سعيد اتفضل. الحقيقه انا برضه حابب ان انا اثني على فكره ان انت دخلت بعد الاسبوع الثالث وعملت الديبرايدمنت دوت هو بالتاكيد حتى لو كانت العيانه ديت الكب بتاعتها مش مش كويسه فانت يو ديد ذا رايت ديسيجن ان تيرمز اوف ديبرايدمنت اند ريتنشن اوف امبلانت يعني انت لو لو داخل تعمل ديبرايدمنت واكستشينج اوف ذا مودولار بارت فكنت هتخش تعمل ديبرايدمنت واكستشينج اوف ذا لاينر فانت غيرت الكب كله بدل ما تغير اللاينر بس يعني انما السؤال بقى هو يا ترى انت غيرت الهيد في الـ في الـ في الريفيجن ده ولا انت كبت ذا سيم هيد لان دوت ممكن ممكن يكون السبب في الديسبيكيشن يعني انت عملت ديبرايدمنت فبالتاكيد الديبرايدمنت بيحتاج ان انت تريموف كويت ا لوت اوف سوفت تيشو ديورنج ذا ديبرايدمنت اكستشينجينج ذا كاب ويتش وود نيد ا هاير اكسبوجر اوف ذا استبلم ديد يو تشينج ذا هيد از ويل تو اكستشينج ذا لينث اوف ذا هيد تو اتشيف ا بيتر سوفت تيشو تنشن اور نوت اي تشينج ذا هيد بيكوز وين اي موفد فروم ذا كاب ويتش از 50 تو ذا كاب ويتش از 54 The liner accepts the head as 36, not a 32 head. So I changed okay. the head from 32 to 36, and the head length or the neck length it depends on the soft tissue tension, as you said. Okay. Doctor Ahmed, can I have a question? Oh. Okay. Doctor Fouad, Doctor Fouad, Doctor Fouad, Doctor Fouad. لا لا انا هو انا كنت هرد على سؤال دكتور احمد لو يعني if it was me انا هعملها open reduction عشان بحب evaluate ال ال cup position وبحب اشوف لو في infection تاني واخد cultures جديدة و واعمل يعني يعني وابص على ال على ال position اللي بي dislocate فيها ويعني كل الحاجات يعني فا I think an open reduction would be better than a closed reduction في السؤال بتاع حضرتك ده closed ولا open Uh, what, what's interesting is that it, it dislocates five weeks after the operation. I mean, she had five good weeks before. هي بس الفكرة يعني أنا طبعاً appreciating very much يا دكتور شريف إن أنت تقول إن أنت عايز تعمل evaluation للstability post reduction. بس متهيألي أنت تقدر برضو تعمل دواء بعد ما تعمل close reduction. يعني لو هو successful. بعد بانه يعمل كلوز ريدكشن افتكر ان هو عمل لها ريفيجن فور انفكشن فالحقيقه اتس نوت فيفرابل ات ذيس ستيج ان انت اوبن اجين اف يو هاف ا تشانس تو دو او تو بيرفورم ا كلوز ريدكشن وانت تقدر بعد ما تعمل كلوز ريدكشن اف يو كان ريديوس ات كلوز ان انت تعمل اسسمنت للستابيلتي زون وللسوفت تيشو تنشن اندر سي ارم كنترول Yes. Um, so I, I would prefer يعني لو 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 تعمل كلوز ريدكشن اذا اف يو كان يعني وكيب ذا ووند كلوز ات ذيس ستيج سبيشالي ذا ام شور ذي از ان انتي بيوتيك ات ذيس ستيج فطبعا لو قدرت تعمل كلوز ريدكشن ات ذيس ستيج متهيألي يبقى احسن حتى على الرغم من الريديو ليوسنت لاين اللي انت بتتكلم عنه حوالين الكب دوت بس متهيألي مش هو ده برضه البيست تايمنج فور ريفايزنج ذيس كاب اجين دكتور احمد اف اي مي ميك كومنت دكتور ايمن دكتور احمد ممكن كومنت؟ اتفضل يا ايوه اتفضل يا دكتور دكتور ابراهيم اتفضل دكتور ابراهيم اتفضل بص انا طبعا موافق جدا مع دكتور ايمن هاويفر انا ثينك ان احنا وي شود اكسكلود ري انفكشن باي اول مينز بوستيفل يعني اي ثينك وي شود جو فور ان اسبيريشن مع كلوز ريدكشن وسي تي سكان تو اسس ذا بوزيشن اوف ذا كاب اف لو انت قلقان من الانتي فيرجن We have to compare the immediate post-operative with the recent X-ray. Like, and again, if she is not infected, of course, we should go for closed reduction. And as we can say, we do a full assessment of the range of motion after that. If she is infected, I think we should go for a formal revision, a two-stage revision or one-stage revision. It would be quite safer, a two-stage revision. And of course, I think that she will be able to get out after five weeks. We have a very high potential that there will be re-infection or still be infection. Uh, I think we should be dedicated in to exclude the infection as much as possible. This is my thinking, Gajwin. Can I comment here? Fadr. Have you seen the image that is immediate post-op, Ahmed? Fadr. The last is in the second of three. Fadr. 
واضحه لحضرتك كده؟ لا السكند اوبريشن سكند اوبريشن حاضر اتفضل احمد فورجيف مي انا بس بشوف ان الديستنس بين ذا 36 هيد اند ذا ميتال مارجن اوف ذا كاب in this view and the margin of the head and the floor of the metal of the cup they are not the same yani the opening distance بتاع metal margin of the cup and the head at its opening is less than the margin of the head and the metal in the floor i don't know if i am right or wrong Uh, it, it seems okay to me. Fine. Dr. Mayor, I think that there was, يعني, no good seating of the femoral head intraoperative at this time. I see that there can be a discrepancy in the thickness. I don't know what it is. يعني, between the space between the head and the margin of the metal margin of the cup. I don't know if I'm right or wrong. حضرتك this kind of shell or type of shell is different from the first one. وبعد كده ال first one اللي هي دي the head is thirty two. The head is thirty two. و this shell is different in in type from this one. What this type one of shell is, is this, يا دكتور أحمد? Uh, it's the same zimmer, but it's different. Yeah. I think this is the way these shells look, Dr. Maher. The Zimmer shells, I think they look like this. Uh, and, and perhaps our thesis, this is the way I see. I, I don't see that the head is, is sort of subluxed or not seating within the poly. I don't know if, if the other panel have different opinions. It's well seated. It's well seated. No, I'm with you, Dr. Maher. I think there's no problem. It's just the cluster or the holes that give you the impression. It's the cluster of holes in these shells. This is why I asked Dr. Ahmed what type of shell this is. This is how it looks, this particular shell from Zimmer. Ahmed, if you allow me, you can give us a picture of the dislocated one so that the one will focus on the cup. Is there really a gap? No, it's the last one. Yes, it's the last one. اخر واحده اه ما نقدرش نقول يا دكتور طارق انها اتحركت ولا لا لان الفيوينج اللي بتعمل ما نقدرش لا لا مش قادرين okay. ممكن تبقى فيوينج بس هو بردك اي شير ماي سسبيشن وذ احمد ان هو ممكن فعلا تكون فيها سم موفنت لكن okay. بردك ما تقدرش أس... تحلف يعني ما تقدرش بيكوز اوف ذا تايمنج عشان وي ستيل هاف تو مور كيسز Uh, can we summarize? بتالي اللي سمعناه بالنسبة للحالة دي we, we, there was a point of uh, raised by Dr. Ibrahim which I think I wanted to raise as well which is basically Dr. Ahmed you, you probably need to make sure that there is no reinfection خصوصا ان هي دي عيانة compromised وماشية على يعني uh, immunosuppressants وعيانة uh, عندها liability ان يحصل لها reinfection عملت ذات وذ بريزرفيشن اوف ذا امبلانت فده في حد ذاته برضه لو بوسيبيليتي اوف ري انفكشن ليه حصل لها ديسلوكيشن افتر 5 ويكس فده برضه يعني ريز ذا سسبيشن فنمبر 1 وي هاف تو اكسكلود ذا بريزنس اوف انفكشن اف يو ار شور از نو انفكشن ريكيرنس اور ريفيشن بيرهابس يو شود بروسيد وذ كلوز ديدكشن اند اف نوت ذن يو نيد تو اوبن اف ذير از ان انفكشن يو بروبلي نيد تو جو اول ذا واي ثرو ا فول فول جوب اني اديشنز فروم ذا بانلز اوكي اف ذير ار نو مور اديشنز كان وي بروسيد تو دكتور طارق يورينا هيس كيس برزنتيشن حاضر شير سكرين شير طبعا انا النهارده هنتكلم بردك على الفراكشن ايكو فيمر ان اولد ايج زي ما كل الزملاء طبعا تفضلوا وقالوا واعتقد ان هو كل اللي قالوه هينصب في في المسج الصغيره اللي انا عاوز اقولها هنا في الكيس ديت 
who are 66 years old, uh, male, overweight, BMI about 40, controlled the hypertension, is not diabetic. He fell downstairs with the fracture, resulted in fracture left necofemur. Mafish comorbidity is kitir. He is a fairly active patient. With he can it the X-ray that he uh, on admission. واضح طبعا ان هي uh, intracapsular displays the fracture necofemur in an age of 66 uh, overweight. طبعا ال, كل ال, ال, اللي قاله الدكتور شريف والدكتور ايمن عبيد uh, ينصب في ان هو ال, الحالات اللي زي دي في كل حته it is debatable however the replacement uh, in most of the literature in that age, in that activity, usually gives some uh, priority uh, for treatment to uh, others. We know that all of us know that the fraction of the femur is a clinical headache from the time, from the time, before we were able to get rid of it, and it was always a problem and it was a serious impact on the patient and on the health authority. في اليونج اكتف بيشن طبعا بتبقى ما فيش مشكله لانه كله لازم تو بي فيكسد لكن في الاولد ايج هنيجي برضك ده اورف ولا هيمي ولا توتال هيب ريبليسمنت الهيمي ارثروبلاستي انا طول عمري كنت من من زمان اشوف ان هي موست اوف ذا هيمز بيبقوا ماشيين ويز ا ليتل بيت اوف ديسكمفورت جراين ديسكمفورت وكان العيان بيبقى اكسبتنج لان وكل الناس تقول لك هي از ان اولد ايج وتعمل له اكس راي تلاقي في وير اوف ذا كارتليج لكن طبعا بما انه ماشي ماشي بعصايه وسبيشلي ان اولد جنريشن وذ ليميتد اكتيفيتي موستلي دي ار اكسبتنج ذا ليفل اوف ديسكمفورت وانس دي ار ستيل ووكينج لكن احنا مثلا شايفين حاجه زي كده انها في خلال سنه ونص الكارتليج كله بقى وور والكلام ده طبعا لما تجو تو ذا ليتريتشر هتلاقي ان هو في مثلا في الاستادي دي لقوا ان في حوالي 14% من عندهم جراين بين والاهم من كده ان هم قاسوا الارتيكولار كارتليج جنريشن ولقوا ان هو تقريبا في حدود 3 ملي بير يير يعني استبلم كارتليج ثيكنس ممكن كله يتاكل في خلال 6 ييرز Uh, total hip replacement طبعاً بيدي very good functional outcome و health related quality of life بتبقى very good ولما تروح زي ما الدكتور أيمن والدكتور شريف وضحونا هتلاقي في literature مليانة إنه هو total hip replacement is a better functional outcome و هتلاقي low risk of reoperation و better Harris score that, but they are slightly higher risk of dislocation وهو ده برضك اللي احنا ويبقى المشكله دايما بتاعته هتبقى الديسلوكيشن ريسك. احنا نشرنا الاور ريزلتس في ان الكساندريا على ديول موبيليتي توتال هيب ريبليسمنت وفي الانجري سنه 2018 كلهم اتعملوا ثرو بوسر لاترال ابروتش او بوسير ابروتش وكلهم اتعمل لهم ترانس اوسيس ريبير اوف ذا كابسول اند اكسنر روتيتور والريزلتس بتاعتنا ما لقتش ولا حاله ديسلوكيشن افتر ذات تايب اوف ريبليسمنت ان ذا بريزنس اوف ا فيري جود فانكشن يعني احنا الجراف ده بيورينا رينج اوف موشن افتر ديول موبيليتي انفراكشن نيكو فيم وشايفين قد ايه طبعا الفليكشن والابداكشن والاكسنر روتيشن اند ذيس از ذي وات يو كان اتشيف دول موبيليتي ان افراكشر نيكو فيمر طبعا كل ده اللي بيخلينا وبيشجعنا ان ناو ناو ادايز ان الكساندريا موستلي وي ادوبت ذي ديول موبيليتي توتال هيب ريبليسمنت ان فراكشر نيكو فيمر في الحالات اللي in old age definitely في الحالات اللي هي زي ما قال الدكتور أيمن كلهم independent they do outdoor activity with a good cognitive function وده 
اللي خلى انا بردك عملت الحاله دي على فكره الاكس راي والحاله دي انا عملتها من ثلاث ايام بس مش ريسنت وادي عملت له ديول موبيليتي سمنتد كاب وذا سمنت سيستم زي الحالات اللي احنا كلها عاملينها قبل كده في اسكندريه ابتداء من 2014 والحقيقه بيدوا فيري جود فانكشنال اوتكم وكلهم يعني الحمد لله بيمشوا كويس جدا وذا جود فانكشن وذ نو بين اند نو ديسلوكيشن از ويل الكونكلوجن من الكلام ده كله اللي احنا شفناه ان ديول هيب ريبليسمنت شود A good functional outcome and range of motion. Uh, this is associated with the restoration of the physical and the health-related quality of life, with, uh, uh, طبعا, uh, uh, stability of the hip. من غير من أثر على الاستابيليتي. هي حالة صغيرة بس أنا حاولت حاولت أوريها لكم as an example للي إحنا بنعمله دلوقتي بأن حوالي ست سنين والحالة اللي لسه عملها من لسه خارجة من المستشفى إمبارح. And thank you for listening. Doctor Fouad, can I comment, please? Please do, Doctor Ibrahim. Please. Well, actually, Doctor Akram, Doctor Tari, I couldn't, I mean, agree less. I was just, not just like that. I believe actually, in, in, we are growing into an area like that of debate. يعني الهيمي ارثروبلاستي ثيوريتيكالي شود بي ريزيرفد فور ذا اولدر بيشنت ليس اكتف بيشنت هاويفر انا اي بيليف فيري ماتش اند اكشلي اي هاف تشينج ماي براكتس اي بين يوزنج ذا موبيليتي ناو يعني ماتش مور فريكونتلي فور ذا باست 5 6 او 7 ييرز انا انا عندي بس مشكله اي نيد راي البانل كله uh, yes. العينين اللي هو المفروض ان هم بيبقوا سكادولد فور هيمي ارثروبلاستي اللي هم عينين الكبار في السن اللي هم حركتهم اقل اللي هو جنرال ستيتس بتاعتهم احش اكشلي ذوز بيشنتس زي ما انت كنت بتقول يا دكتور طارق هم ار مور برون تو كومبليكيشنز العينين دول ما يستحملوش yes. عمليتين العينين دول يوجوالي الكارتج بتاعهم از ليس هيلثي ويوجوالي العينين دول اللي هم هيبقوا هم البون بتاعهم اوسيفراتيك اللي هم يبقى مور برون ان هم يخشوا بروتروزيو ان اكشلي اي دونت سي واي ذوز بيشنت اللي احنا بنقول هم دول تعمل لهم ارثروبلاستي هيمي ارثروبلاستي اكشلي البيشنت ده عاوز سنجل شوت وده ريت اوف سكسس تو مايند الهيمي ارثروبلاستي شود بي ريزيرف لو عندنا كروس ايشو لو عندنا بيشنت وذ فيري ليميتد لايف اكسبكتنسي او لو عيان uh, ما يقدرش يستحمل التلت ساعه او نص ساعه زياده فور بليدنج تندنسي فور جنرال هيلث فاي نيد يور كومنت عشان اكشلي ده اللي انا بعمله ناو ادايز وخايف اكون يعني ميبي ام اوفر دوينج ات فعاوز رايك انت راي ايمن راي الدكتور فؤاد يعني كل البانل اف اتس بوسيبل يعني والله يا دكتور ابراهيم اللي انت بتقوله ده انت قصدت البوينت اللي هي كلنا بنفكر فيها احنا ساعات بنعمل الهامي ارثروبلاستي وبنقول اصل عنده كبير قوي اصل عنده الاكتيفيتي بتاعته عنده 82 سنه عنده 83 سنه اللايف اكسبكتنسي از ليس وتفاجئ ان هو جاي لك بعد ثلاث سنين وهو عنده 85 سنه او 86 سنه وهو ان سيفير بين والكارتليج اتاكل وبدا دكتور طارق سيفير فور فيجن وتريكونستراكت الاستابلم at that age وده بيحب بيحطنا في دايلما ان هو ال... يعني طب انا وهو كان عنده 82 سنه كان احسن انا اعمل له توتال هيب ريبليسمنت which is more predictable than هيمي ارثرو بلس انا اي دو اجري with you ان هو الهيمي ارثرو بلس وحقيقه ده اللي انا بعمله بريزيرف للحالات اللي هم انا حاسس ان هو فيري ليميتد اكتيفيتي اندور اكتيفيتي واحد او واحده يا دوبك بس بيخش الحمام ويطلع من الحمام ما فيش اوت دور اكتيفيتي والجنرال هيلث بتاعته از نوت ذات جود انما لو كان هو حتى لو عنده 85 سنه وستيل اكتيف بيقدر يخرج بيقدر يمشي كان بيمشي اندبندنت ده بردك بعمل له توتال هيب ريبليسمنت وذ ديول موبيليتي كاب طبعا اي دو اجري 100% وذ يو in your thoughts uh, في الموضوع ده uh, الصراحة يا دكتور طارق طبعا يعني if I may uh, add a comment لو تسمح لي uh, دكتور إبراهيم طبعا زي ما أنت قلت uh, he, he, he hit the point 
So we have to remember in this change in policy and philosophy has been largely driven by an implant. It hasn't been driven by a new surgical technique or the dual mobility cups. هي اللي خلتنا نبقى very much inclined ان احنا نبتدي نحط more total hips especially for elderly patients than hemiarthroplasty and I think you will agree with that. But yes. uh, at the same time I think the dual mobility برضو in a way is is over pushed. Uh, not the total hip arthroplasty is over pushed but the dual mobility is over pushed and overused. وفي comment uh, very interesting قالوا دكتور uh, ايمن عبيد لما قال لحضرتك انه بلو ا سيرتن ايج نبتدي نتكلم هل ديو موبيليتي ولا ستاندرد توتال هيب لانه ات اتراكتد ماي اتنشن التايتل اوف يور بيبر ان هي ان ذا ميدل ايج ايجيبشنز فكلمه ميدل ايج ايجيبشنز دي uh, يعني انا مش عارف مقصود بيها ايه uh, انا تو ماي براكتس اي ويل اجري وذ اول وات يو سيد بت اي ويل ابلاي ات ابوف ذا ايج اوف 65 تو 70 Below the age of 65, and I am talking about the active 65, uh, below that age, and even some, sometimes at the age of 65 or even at the age of 70, somebody who is really active, who sometimes likes to play sports, who is do, leading a full, not just being independently mobile, but really active patient, I will consider a total hip replacement A standard total hip, not a dual mobility, because I still have some reservations about the longevity of the dual mobility. I'm still waiting for the literature to to support me uh, in in either directions. But at the moment, uh, I would still go for a for a for a total hip arthroplasty for the young active or an older active patients after femoral neck fracture rather than a dual mobility. And I don't know what is the the the, the opinion of the panel in that. 65 uh, uh, years old uh, uh, is a middle age is not uh, that old age انما احنا دلوقتي بنتكلم انت يو اجري اللي هو ابراهيم بيقصده اللي هو از اللي هو جروب اللي هو ابف 80 ابف 80 ده اعتقد يعني the patient deserves to have a total hip replacement لان oh yes, I just don't disagree with that oh, I agree with the total hip my, my point oh. is whether a standard dual mobility or a standard hip replacement this is the point لا طبعا لا طبعا dual mobility for stability لان هو 85 ولا 82 ولا 83 لو حطيت له standard total hip replacement with a smaller head definitely they are more prone to instability لكن طبعا ديول موبيليتي ان ذات ايج از هاز ا برايورتي انا بتكلم على 65 لا 65 اه السمنت ديول موبيليتي كاب السمنت ديول موبيليتي كابس ما لهمش ما لهمش ريديوز كتير ما فيش ريفرنس ستاديز كتيره اتعملت على السمنت مش السمنت اللي هو غالبا انت تستخدمه في ال 85 ييرز ممكن ممكن اتكلم ممكن اكومنت يا دكتور يا دكتور ايمن انت عندك جود اكسبيرينس اكشلي دكتور ايمن كابريم اتفضل انا اتكلم انا بليز اتكلم انا اكشلي دكتور اكرم اتفضل يا ايمن اتفضل يا حبيبي لا لا لو في حاجه اتفضل يا عايز تقول حاجه انا كنت هجاوب على سؤالك من لا عشان انت كنت ب... كنت بدات الدسكشن بان انت آه بتسال على ال... على الفاليو بتاعه الجيون موبيليتي ارتيكيليشن في الالدرلي بوبيليشن يعني آه انا انا الحقيقه حابب ان انا كومنت على ثري آه كده بسرعه ثري بوينت اول واحده آه بتاعه السؤال بتاع الدكتور ابراهيم آه العيانين الفيري ايردرلي اللي هم كنا بنعمل لهم باي بولر آه هيمارتوبلاك احنا عندنا ايشو في العيانين دولت وهو ان منهم كتير الكوجنيتيف فانكشن بتاعتهم از فيري لو ولما انت تدور انه عيان هيبقى كومبلاينت ويز انستراكشنز فبتلاقي ان العيانين اللي ليس كومبلاينت ويز انستراكشنز ذات يو جيف تو ذيم ار لايكلي تو بي اولدر او مور فيري اولدرلي بوبليشن عن العيانين اليانجر بيشنتس اللي انت ممكن تديهم انستراكشنز uh, فعشان كده اه ممكن يكون في فعلا في السيفيرلي اوستيوبروتيك الارتيكولار كارتج بتاعتهم از نوت جود تو ويذ ستاند بايبولر فور فور اني لينث اوف تايم واللو 
كوجنيتيف فانكشن بالنسبه لهم دولت ممكن يبقوا فعلا كانديدتس فور توتال ديول موبيلتي ارتيكيليشن النقطه الثانيه اللي انا حابب اكومنت عليها هي فكره سمنت ديول موبيلتي ولا سمنت ديول موبيلتي يعني دايما الديسيجن بيجي من البون كواليتي بالنسبه لي يعني وانا بعمل ريمنج اشوف العيان ده يقدر يشيل سمنت السكاب ولا لا لو يقدر يشيل سمنت السكاب فانا هركب له سمنت السكاب مش سمنت السكاب وبريزرف السمنت دوت للفيري سيفيرلي اوستيوبروتيك اولد بيشنت لان هم دولت اللي ممكن السمنت السكاب يمشي معاهم اه صحيح ان ذا لاست مثلا 7 ييرز اي بين يوزنج ديورال موبيلتي وخلال السبع سنين دولت انا لسه ما عملتش ولا ريفيجن لكاب ابارت من من حالات انفكتد مثلا انما انما ما عملتش ديول موبيلتي ريفيجن عشان خاطر لوس كاب فلو البون كواليتي بتاعته كويسه اي وود يوز سمنت ليس لان هو دل عليه اللونج تراك هيستوري اوف 40 ييرز عن السمنت دي النقطه الثالثه اللي بيتكلم عنها الدكتور فؤاد بتاعه الاكتيفيتي يعني انت لما يبقى عندك عيان 70 ييرز وبيروح يلعب جولف او عيان بيعمل سايكلينج او بيمشي في التراك الحقيقه ان الكاتيجوري ده اوف بيشنتس الديول موبيلتي بالنسبه له از فار مور بيتر ذان ان انا اديله فيكسد بيرنج ده عايز يقعد يصلي في الارض وعايز يقعد براحته وعايز يتحرك براحته آه الحقيقه ان الادفانتج بتاع الديول موبيلتي للعيان دوت آه احسن من الفيكسد بيرنج ديزاينز انا ب... انا انا لما عرضت اللاست بارادايم عرضت الفيكسد بيرنج للعيانين اللي انا حابب اركب لهم هاي كروس لينكد بولي على سيراميك هيد اللي هم ريلي فيري يونج انت بتتكلم في عيانين 55 ييرز و 52 و 50 ييرز اولد هم دولت العيانين اللي اكوردنج تو تو ذا فرنش يعني اوثوريتيز اللي هم ديزايننج الديول موبيلتي بيبقى لسه ما فيش عنده فيري كونكلوسيف ايفيدنس هل يا ترى يعمل لهم برايمري ولا ولا لا انما انما في جراحين فرنسيين كتير على فكره بيعملوا ان اول ايج جروبس اول ايج جروبس ومش بس فرنسيين يعني احنا لسه كنا في الجول موبيلتي اللي كان معايا فيه الدكتور ابراهيم الجنزوري وصديقنا اللبناني ساعتها قال ان هو بيعمل جول موبيلتي في اول ايج جروبس شكرا جزيلا اوكي يعني اي ثينك ذا وان ليتل ديفرنس ما بين اللي انت بتقوله يا دكتور ايمن واللي انا بقوله ان فور ماي براكتس موست اوف ذا patients اللي عندهم جود بون ستوك وانت بتريم وحس ان هم they can take a cementless cup up until now in my practice I would put a standard hip and I haven't come across uh, a problem with this location in these patients let me these patients have a very good cognitive functions they are to me as good as the ones who are 50 or 55 whether they are 65 or 70 ال- ال- active 70 active 65 behaves exactly like the active 50 and active 55 It is in, 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 in my findings in the patients, if they are 65 or less or more, and don't very poor bone stock, probably they will get more uh, cemented dual mobility cups. Anyway, عشان الوقت بعد إذن panel, I think we should proceed للحالة الأخيرة. دكتور أحمد حازم موجود معنا. I think there is one third case to present. مساء الخير عليكم جميعا انا بس هبريزنت حاله سريعه يعني مش هاخد علشان خاطر انا عارف ان الوقت خلاص اوريدي از اوفر ذس از ا كيس ميل 60 ييرز اولد وقع بلو انرجي تروما وقع في البيت عاديه uh, هو اصلا عنده كوموربيديتيز هيز اوبيز عنده انكونترولد ديابيتس And a cardiac problem with an ejection fraction of about 35. Where, however, he's active. And some sort of peripheral neuropathy, ma peripheral vascular disease, zay aynin al uncontrolled diabetes al muhmilin al bensofum yawmiyan. This is the X-rays al hawa presented biha liya, wa this CT scan betaita. And I decided, and then I immediately go for internal fixation. But بما ان هو كان عنده كارديو بروبلم وان كنترولد وعلى ادويه وكوموربيديتيز عاليه 
فدكاتره التخدير كانوا طلبوا ان هو يبقى في لي اي سي يو ادمشن بعد العمليه ونعدل له بس في شويه الادويه قبل العمليه لمده ثلاث ايام. فاخذ 3 دايز افتر تروما فور بري اوبريتيف بريباريشن. على اليوم الرابع انا دخلت عشان اعمل له فيكسيشن بكانيوليتد سكروز از ان هو ده كان اندسبليست فراكتشر وحتى كان فالجوس امباكتد. On the traction table, can the fracture بتاعي بقى displaced? وبين إن هو Paul angle بتاعه تقريبا 50 to 70 degrees, which is Paul 2 to 3, which is somehow unstable. The preoperative planning بتاعي مش just do it. إن أنا دائما بgo for cannulated screws only. أنا بفكر في forces acting on the hip. سواء في الاي بي دايركشن او في اللاترال دايركشن في في اللاترال دايركشن اتس اولويز ذا هيب از فورست انتو ريترو فيرجن وفي الاي وفي الانترو بوستيري دايركشن اتس فورست انتو فيرم فورسز ده من هنا جت نظريه الباول انجل بس مشكله باول انجل ان هو ما لفتش نظرنا لللاترال فيو ويتش از لوكينج ات ذا بوستيرير كورتيكال باترس للنك والبوسيبيليتي اوف بينج انستيبل نتيجه ان هو في بوستيرير كومينيوشن ان سيمبل باو ميكانكس اف وي فيكس ذا انستيبل فراكشرز بي كانيوليتد سكروز وات هابن لو هات اكتس لايك ا سيسو بيحصل فيرم انجليشن لانها اتس فيكست ات 1 بوينت على اللاترال كورتكس اونلي. وذيس از وات وي سي ان هاو ذا فراكشر فيلز اللي بيبقوا فيكست بي كانيوليتد سكروز في فيرتيكال فيرتيكالي انستيبل فراكشرز. فان ا سيمبل بايو ميكانكس وي نيد تو فيكس ذا لاترال بوينت وساعتها لو تعرض الهيب باي حال من الاحوال لاي فورسز ميديالي ده هو السايد بليت او الانجل فيكسيشن او الفيكست انجل ديفايس ويل بريفنت السي سو ايفكت اللي بتحصل مع الكانيوليتد سكروز نتيجه ان هو ما فيش فيكسيشن لاترالي. وذيس از كان ديسكرايب في كذا بايوميكانيكال ستادي في كذا بايوميكانيكال ستادي ذيس از ون اوف ذيم المنشور اوف كور في 1999. ذيس uh, از في الاي بي فيو. So what I use is an angle stable device, which is DHS. محافظة على ال angle بتاعتها بحيث إن مهما لو تعرضت لي superior to inferior forces, the fixed angle هي prevent the seesaw effect اللي بتحصل مع the vertically unstable fractures. The same happens with the unstable fractures في the lateral dimension أو the other أو the perpendicular plane. في حالة وجود posterior comminution مع الموفمنت من 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 up uh, chair for example uh, we are forcing our hips in a retroverted direction زي مثلا في الاكس راي اللي فيها lateral view ده هي في posterior comminution posteriorly او في السي تي سكان لو ما حطيناش an angle fixed device again we are creating a seesaw effect برضه دي اتش اس ات بريفنتس روتيشن وده هو كانها فيكست انجل ديفايس اجين في اللاترال بلين ده كله طبعا ما فيش في الليترشر زي ما الدكتور شريف قال وزي ما الدكتور فؤاد قال ما فيش اي ايفيدنس ان الدي اتش اس احسن من الكانيوليتد سكروز ان كيس ان هو بس يتعمل باي ا بروبر تكنيك This is uh, my case. This is the immediate post-operative X-ray. I went for a DHS. BD rotational screw. I reduced it closed. So I just was. حصل نتيجة the overlap in هون في inferior comminution في النك وهي بينا في lateral view. العيان ده بدأ يمشي بعد اسبوعين this is this is how it appears في الاي بي وفي اللاترال فيو العيان ده بدأ يمشي فول ويت بيرنج بعد 2 ويكس لان هو عنده بريفرال نيوروباثي نتيجه الانكونترول دايابيتس 
عنده بريفرال فاسكولار ديزيز فهي كانت توليريت ان انا اقول له اي حاجه من انواع التو تاتش او البارشال ويت بيرنج باي صوره من الصور. This is the follow up after three months and this is واحنا شايفين ان في شويه osteopenia and this is the follow up after six months with a complete union of the fracture في الاي بي اند في اللاترال فيو. My message in the literature supports the use of two devices. Biomechanically, the angle stable devices, like the DHS, is superior to the screws. However, it reported in the literature in the AVN more than the DHS. Why I think in the one probably it is due to a bad technique. The fact that the people are not used to the rotational screw, so maybe the head is lifted during the reaming. مفروض ان احنا يعني انا اللي فق... اللي فادني في الحاله دهي ان انا I'm always prepared with both fixation devices انا كنت ان انا هعمل عشان ده عيان diabetic والكومور بيتس بتتنحل دايما بحضر معايا الفيكس انجل ديفايس فبي بريبيرد وذ اول الفيكسيشن لان لما تحطه على التراكشن تيبل او الـ او الفراكشر بلين او باور فراكشر بلين بيابير بعد الريدكشن وده البيست عشان تو اندرستاند الفراكشر بلين والاستابيليتي بتاعه الفراكشر ميكانيكال شكرا يا دكتور فؤاد شكرا يا احمد ذس از ا فيري انتريستنج كيس يعني اذا كان في كومنت البانل رايهم في حد يحب يدي كومنت على الكيس لا انا كنت احب ارد على سؤال دكتور ابراهيم الجنسوت اتفضل يا شريف هو انا يعني ستيل انا اي اجري شويه ان احنا وي شود وي شود نوت بي اول اندستري بريفن ماني بشكل الامبلانت جدا وي شود يعني فولو باي ذا جايدلاينز في الانديكيشنز بتاعه الديول موبيليتي يعني ديفينتلي يا دكتور ابراهيم لو عندك حد مثلا عنده كوجنيتيف ديس فانكشن يعني موست اوف الناس اللي عندهم ديول موبيليتيز والناس كبار زي ما دكتور ايمن قال في محاضرته زي ما دكتور طارق قال مجموعه كبيره جدا منهم عندهم سنايل ديمنشا ومجموعه كبيره عندها الزهايمر وكل المجموعه دي ما بتسمعش انستراكشنز قوي فاتس مات بتر ان طبعا دول ديول موبيليتي Uh, وفي ناس هيبقى عندهم مشاكل انستابيليتي زي الناس اللي عندهم نيورو ماسكولار بروبلمز فاي ثينك ان دول ار يعني ا جود انديكيشن فور ديور موبيليتي لكن ستيل لما انت بقى عندك بيشنت 85 ييرز اول مش هنقدر قوي يعني انا انا في نظري كده ان احنا مش هنقدر مش هنقدر قوي ن, 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 نكسر الجايد لاينز في الحته دي ونحط ديور موبيليتي في كل الحالات انستيد اوف باي بولر لكن we will stick to the indications as much as possible لحد ما الليترشر زي ما الدكتور فهد قال هنا شويه ناحيه الديول موبيليتي لان احنا عارفين ان ان المشكله في الـ في الارثروبلاستي هي ان الاندستري از درايفنج برضو تفكيرنا شويه هم بيطلعوا لنا حاجات افكار حلوه واحنا وي فولو الافكار الحلوه الجديده وبعدين افتر سام تايمز حاجات كتير من الافكار دي بنكتشف ان هي They had problems or فيها مشاكل زي المثل أو مثل لما طلع تاني رجع تاني in fashion ورجع تاني بقى في مشكلة و and so on. ف ف I think we would يعني I would still أنا كشريف خالد I would stick to the guidelines that we just هعمل في المين وبرهم مخدة من هالدول الحالات اللي indicated for the mobility عمل لها the mobility or otherwise. الحالات التانية لو لو فيري اكتف ممكن يبقى توت الهيب عادية ولو لو هو ان اكتف يبقى جو جو هيد فور باي بولر وما اعتقدش ان احنا اغلبنا اللي بيعمل باي بولر بروفيسز ما اعتقدش ان احنا شفنا وير سريع قوي في الحالات الكبيرة دي لان هم الديماندز بتاعتهم قليلة معنى ان واحد نعمل له باي بولر ويجي لنا بعد سنتين ثلاثة الاستابل لما نتاكل ذس از بروبلي اور ميستيك ان احنا اخترنا له اوبشن مش مناسب لل level of activity that we can. Uh, this is my personal opinion. Thank you very much.
يعني if I can add a comment for this أعتقد إن هو a dual mobility stood the, the, the time Definitely. over 40 years فهو يعني من ناحية إن هو is a new implant but it's not a new implant uh, all at white, especially in France. The thing that I was committed to Dr. Akram is that it's cemented dual mobility. I don't think that it's a problem. Yes, I'm not talking about it, but of course, in the cases that you see that the cells are a little bit soft, زي الحالة اللي أنا عرضتها وفعلا أنا الحالة دي كنت الانتنشن إن أنا أركب له سمنت كاب لكن لقيت الأسباب لما زالت البيت سوفت عشان كده أنا أوبتد فور سمنت كاب وإحنا بدأنا ديول موبيليتي دلوقتي أوفر 6 ييرز يعني كلامي بأضمه لكلام دكتور أيمن إن أنا خلال الست سنين دول إحنا عملنا دلوقتي حالات كتير جدا سمنت كاب ديول موبيليتي ما فيش ولا حالة عملنا لها ريفيجن فور لوسنينج اوف ذا كاب يعني يعني اعتقد طبعا 6 ييرز از نوت لونج تيرم فولو اب لكن اتليست يو كان كول ات ميد تيرم فولو اب ان هو ما فيش ولا حالة كان فيها لوسنينج وعملنا لها ريفيجن فور لوسنينج فده برضك بيدينا تراست ان سمنتد كاب از ويل يعني اف يو كان نوت بوت اتليست واي نوت بوت سمنتد ديول موبيليتي كاب دي النقطة بالنسبة اللي طبعا اللي بيقوله الدكتور شريف طبعا ويقول أي إن at age of eighty five or something like this if the patient has a poor cognitive function or especially general condition is not that good طبعا هنحط له bipolar مش هنحط له total hip replacement لكن إحنا نتكلم على the old age at that age وفي نفس الوقت still preserving a good function وعنده the cognitive function تاتو كويس دول اللي أنا I'm positive إن أنا أحط له total hip دكتور فؤاد تسمح لي تسمح لي دكتور فؤاد اول حاجه الحاله بتاعت الدكتور احمد حازم اتراكتد ماي اتنشن تو ا كويستشن ذا اي وود لايك تو ريز امونج ذا فاكولتي يعني اوبلي تو تو فايند في حالات بتيجي بنجلكتد فراكشر نيك اوف فيمر أو العيان being optimized مثلا for surgical intention فياخد له أسبوعين ثلاثة على بال ما يجي عشان يعمل البروسيجر اللي مطلوبة للفاكشر نيك اوف فيمر دوت. إمتى تعتقد إن الـ delay in performing the surgery um, would change your mind from internal fixation to an alternative option؟ يعني إمتى تعتبر إن it is uh, too late now perform an internal fixation. كتير احنا بنشوف عيانين صغيرين في السن. If you see them, if you catch them within the first 24 hours, 48 hours, perhaps you would perform an internal fixation. بس كتير نشوف عيانين still present in this country. ان انت تشوف عيان either being optimized for surgical intervention. He appeared too late or missed the fracture وجالك بعد ثلاث شهور. يعني انا انا شفت مره عيانه جايه لي كانت حامل وولدت جالها تقريبا ابرنت يعني توز ان اندسبريس فراكشر بس نجلكتد فور ثري مانث ف ف فامتى تعتبر الكات لاين الكات اوف لاين فور تشينجينج فور تشينجينج فيكسيشن تو ارسون باس دكتور ايمن اللي فوق 60 ولا اللي تحت 60 تحت 60 تحت 60 تحت 60 في ناس ناشره لحد ست اشهر نو ديفرنس في الاي في ان يعني دول يعني زي ما تشوف براحتك بس احنا في الـ في الـ في التانيين هم حاطين كات اوف 3 ويكس يعني لو بقى نجلكتد اكتر من 3 ويكس ذا ليتريتشر وود بوش يو تو توتال هيب ريبليسمنت بس في الصغيرين في ناس ناشره في الليتريتشر اب تو 6 مانث نو ديفرنس في الاي في ان عامل عامل لها open reduction internal fixation after a neglected fracture of neck of femur for six months. يعني في ناس they push the cork to the end. It depends على شكل ال fracture. What is the what is the what's the success rate for these patients who were delayed for six months? هم قايلين إن ما عندهمش AVN. قايلين إن the incidence of AVN is not different than the regular. 
بوبيوليشن اعتقد ان حته قصه الالينز اصلها عدت في 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 حته كده عامله زي ال يعني زي الرولر كوسترز كده الاول كان في كلام كتير في الليتشر على انه every hour makes a difference with the first 12 hours with 24 hours yes. and so on وبعدين الليتشر رجع وابتدى يدرايف question marks about the validity of these يعني studies and these researches زي ما انت عارف يا دكتور شريف وابتدى يرجع يقول آه. مش متاكدين قوي 24 ساعه ولا 24 ولا 3 ايام ولا اسبوع <تصفيق> واعتقد ان سؤال دكتور ايمن از فيري فاليد كويشن اند فيري امبورتنت كويشن لانه ما اعتقدش ان الليتشر تسمع تسمع لي اول حاجه دكتور فؤاد بس دكتور حازم بيه هكمل دكتور حازم بيه اي بيه زي حضرتك انا مش شايفين حضرتك يا بيه الدنيا ضلمه الدنيا ضلمه شويه معلش ولع النور يا دكتور حازم ايوه ولع النور والله بس ليا في حاجه ايوه انا انا اتفضل يا فندم هو انا كنت عاوز اقول انه ردا على الدكتور ايمن موضوع التايم ديفينتلي از نوت يعني از نوت فولفيلينج ذا ريكويرمنتس تو سي يس اور نو كمان في حاجه ان الناس بتقول لك ما حصلش ايه فاسكولار نيكروزس بعد السيرجن وانا متصور انه احنا المفروض يكون ما عندناش اي فاسكولار نيكروزس قبل ما نبتدي السيرجري فور فيكسيشن ففي الشغل اللي كنا عملناه على الكيسز اللي هي فيها نون يونيون او الكيس اللي بريزنتد ليت بعد النون يونيون لقينا انه سو لونج ذات ذا هيد از ستيل فايبل اند مينتينينج اس تيكشر ذن وي كان بروسيد ايفن not only in terms of fixation, but even with grafting of the uh, uh, neck of the femur. Uh, 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 and we obtained uh, 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 healing in some cases. In, in most of the cases. I can't say the percentage is exact, but the paper is still there. In other words, if we say three weeks, then hip replacement, five weeks, then hip replacement, any time, then hip replacement, that's the truth. في ان احنا بنضيع ذا تشانس اوف جيتنج يعني نورمال هيب فور ذا بيشنت باي تريتنج هيز هيب احسن من اننا نعمل هيب ريبليسمنت وده الحقيقه الكومنت اللي جالي على البيبر اللي عملناها على النون يونيون قالوا ان كنتوا يو جيت اجين ذا تشانس فور ذا بيشنت to uh, earn a, a functioning hip rather than a total hip. فعاوز اقول ايه بس يا دكتور حازم طبعا انا انا متشكر لحضرتك ان انت تكومنت وتعرض الاكسبيرينس بتاعتك في البيبر ديت انما ساعات كثيره وحضرتك يعني استاذ الاساتذه وعارف يعني الكلام ده كويس العيان بيبقى عايز يسمع منك انا عايز اعرف لو انت عملت لي دلوقتي فيكسيشن السكسس ريت بتاع ده ايه؟ و هتخليني إيه. اعمل عمليه وبعد ثلاث اشهر ولا ولا اربع اشهر تركب لي هيبر بليسمنت طب ما تعمل لي من الاول انت عارف حاجه إيه. الديبيت دوت على طول جوينج اون بنلاقي العكس بنلاقي ناس مفزوعه جدا من انك هتعمل كل ما يروح لحد يقول له اعمل توتال هيب فبيتفزع يروح لواحد ثاني يقول له توتال هيب بيتفزع لانه هو نفسه يعمل حاجه ما يعملش فيها هيب بليسمنت لان الناس لما بتقرا بتقرا ان الهيب بليسمنت دي لها سيرتن آه آه لايف uh, اكسبكتنس uh, uh, فالعكس موجود برضو انما انا لو هتكلم مع بيشنت هتكلم بما يعني يو ضميري من ناحيه انا اذا لقيت ان الهيد از فايبل بقول انا في عندي تشانس مور اور ليس اعتقد هي ابروتش 70 حاجه بالسنت انك انت تو ريتين يور هيب اند اف وي فيل ويل كونفرت ان تو توتال هيب دي نقطه النقطه الثانيه انه إذا كان البيت تشويس هيدخل معانا فيبقى خلاص يبقى احنا ما بقاش تشويس بقى ان احنا إذا كان البيشنت عايز يعمل توتال هيب هنعمل إحنا عاوز يخش التجربة يدخل فيها يبقى هنا ما فيش عندنا كايند أوف ساينتفيك راشونال فور ذا تشويس عارف الدكتور حازم بيه المشكلة دايما بتنشأ من الديفينيشن أوف فايبل هيد لأن عيان نجلكتد في ويكس Definitely, we cannot expect that the head will collapse or 
ان فور ويكس تايم واحنا مش عارفين كام فايبل ولا مش فايبل في نفس الوقت يعني دي ما بنبقاش عارفينها طبعا السؤال اللي يجي بعد كده انت بتعرف ازاي ان الهيد فايبل هي دي طبعا سؤال بي سؤال بيحيرني انا شخصيا لانه كل ما نقول نعمل مثلا ام ار اي لا كويري نقول مثلا نعمل سكنتجرافي برضو بيقولوا برضو كويري هي طبعا معروف الحكايه دي انما هي الهيد اللي مينتيننج التكستشر ان ذا نورمال اكس اي ان ذا بلين اكس راي انا بعتبرها يعني بوتنشالي فايبل هي ان ذا ايدو حتى يا ترى الليفل الليفل بتاع الفراكشر ويذر ات از ستريت سب كابيتال ولا مين سرفايكل ولا بيز سرفايكل مش يفرق معانا برضو حاجه زي كده كل ما كان هاير كل ما كان هاير كل ما كان التشانس او نيك ريزوربشن اعلى وده طبعا كل ما كانت النيك ريزورب ابعد انت بتحتاج جرافت اكبر انا مش بقول ان انا هيجي حاله بعد بعد ما يكون النيك بتاعتها ابزوربد وشفنا الهيد زي كريسنت انسايد استابلم اقول ان ده هينفع ان انا اعمل له توتال هيد سوري سوري اعمل له ريكونستراكشن طبعا ده لا هو طبعا دكتور حازم بي يو هيد ذا بوينت ان هو الجاي زونز اعتقد التعامل معاها لازم هيكون فيها اكسبلانيشن للعيان في الاخر هيتقال للعيان انه وي ار ان جراي زون وانه بالتالي في بروبابيلتيز وفي اكسبكتيشنز وفي ريسكس وفي الاخر ممكن جدا في الجراي زون تلاقي عيان ولو انك بتقول له يو هاف ا فيري جود تشانس ميبي 70% اوف بريزيرفينج يور هيب يقول لك بس انا مش عايز اخد ال 30% لو في عيان هيبقى بيعتبر ان ال 70% تشانس دي از ان اكسلنت يعني اوفر بتتعمل وبالتالي يقول لك اه طب انا ام ويلينج تو تيك ذات ريسك زي بالظبط العيان اللي بيبقى عنده اي في ان جريد 2 تو 3 وبعدين تقول له طب وهو عمره ورب سنه ولا 45 سنه اعمل لك دي كومبريشن ولا اعمل لك هيبو كده اي ثينك انه احنا وي ار جيتنج كلوز للرابينج اب هل في اي حد من الاتنديز من ال من البانل او حد من الاساتذه الفاضل يحب يقول اني كومنت اباوت ايذر ذا لاست كيس او التوبيك بتاع البينار هشكرك يا فؤاد على مجهودك بقى شكرا دكتور ايمن انا اللي بشكركم جميعا على على آه. كل اللي عملتوه والفيري انترستنج اند اكسايتنج كيسز المحاضرات اللي فيري ويل دان يعني ما انساش طبعا كل اللي انتوا عملتوه اذا كان انت دكتور ايمن ولا دكتور شريف ولا احمد عبد الحال ودكتور احمد خصوصا طبعا الاساتذه اساتذتي الافاضل دكتور حازم بي ودكتور ماهر حلاوه وكل الناس اللي اتندد الويبينار احنا حاولنا قدر المستطاع اننا وي وي يعني هيت سبيسيفيك ايج جروب اللي هو مش بس الالدرلي و ذا اونلي تريتمنت از اتروبلاستي بس كمان ذس بارتيكل ايج جروب اللي انا سميته الانيجماتيك ايج او البازل ايج او الكونفيوزنج ايج اللي هو وير ان انترنال فيكسيشن مايت بي ا تشويس ان ان اف وي ار جوينج تو اوبت فور ان اتروبلاستي لازم كمان We have to have specific guidelines for what type of arthroplasty in this particular group of patients. Uh, if this is all, and I would like also, طبعا ما أرش I wrap up قبل ما أشكر كمان تحديدا شركة إكسير للسبورت وال 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 اللي هم دخلوا لهذا الويبينار وبشكر جدا الأتنديز اللي فضلوا قاعدين معانا to this late hour. وبشكر ديفنتلي اجين كل البانل وكل الساده الافاضل والاساتذه اللي شاركونا في هذا الويبينار اند وي هاف انذر ويبينار لسه ما تحددش بس ميعاده هيبقى على انذر فيري يعني اكسايتنج بروبلم ويتش از ذا يونج اكتيف بيشنت هيبقى لسه هنعلن عنه ان شاء الله شكرا ليكم جميعا وبليز هاف ا فيري نايس ايفنينج ثانك يو السلام عليكم ثانك يو فيري ماتش شكرا ثانك يو ثانك يو فيري ماتش صباح على خير شكرا جزيلا مع السلامة مع السلامة مع السلامة مع السلامة على خير مع السلامة وانتم بالعافية شكرا يا دكتور فؤاد شكرا يا طارق شكرا ليكم جميعا